Hallelujah, Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is King, y'all. All glory be to the Father. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm running a little behind schedule today. I decided that I want to go a different place and record than I usually go. Because I'm, I'm getting, I guess I'm not feeling too good about keep recording in the same spot. My phone is on like 40 something percent. So... I'm gonna take a trip and I'm, 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 be, I'm gonna be driving for like at least 30 minutes, 40 minutes at least. And we can talk the whole time. Hopefully my service stays well. Now, one of the things I wanted to speak about was how uh, Muhammad, when he created Ramadan, I got, I don't have that much written down. I only have a little bit written down. So that's why I, I ask y'all sometimes if y'all got any topics that you would like me to cover, just email it to me. Because that helps me out a lot due to me always, if I'm not making videos, I'm working. If I'm not working, I'm working on making more videos. So I got to. A, a, a beautiful, wonderful schedule. All glory be to God. He took me out of darkness and pulled me into the marvelous light. I don't have to stay in this world. I just do it to take care of bills, that's all. I don't have to work and try to get towards a goal or whatever. I'm just going to put all my trust in God and, and forsake everything that I, uh, everything in this world, everything I, I tried to work to get ahead in life and, and get certain things done and move forward, but I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm going to trust in the Lord in all my way. He's going to direct my paths. So, it's been a blessing to be able to come up here every day and preach this word. One of the comments I've seen, they said, these views can't, can't be real. If you just come in and check one of the live chats, you'll see. It's usually sometimes 50 30 or 70 or like 100 people on an average that's what we average like almost 100 people because i told people this is the real true church of god and we're gonna worship every day like how they did in the bible so people see and they feel that I, my heart is for god no matter how much the devil works through people and try to make them look at God in a bad light that ain't gonna never change me because before God started before before God started drawing people to me he, he, he made them run away from me I was preaching in the streets people thought I was crazy I'm yelling hoping somebody listened to me I'm yelling, talking about, man, y'all don't believe in God. Ain't nobody even saying amen. I was begging, and, 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 and not begging people, but begging God to have people listen to me. And I was preaching aggressive and bold. So I would scare people away, I guess. People might listen, but they ain't trying to fellowship and, and, and stuff like that. Because they seem like, they seem like boldness in me. I got lied on and stuff like that, but I'm not going to move in the past and live in the past. Old things pass away. Every day is new grace, new mercy, and new blessings. So whatever happened to me in the past, I just say I, I hope God, I hope Jesus Christ come into your heart, whoever did anything wrong and spoke anything bad about me. And I would, if you want to talk, we can talk. I'm like, my heart, I'm a, I'm a teddy bear. In my heart, it don't matter who it is, what you did. I can't hold grudges. I can't have darkness in my heart. So even like I know certain stuff is wrong. Like somebody could be 
breaking one of the commandments. I'll be upset. I voice how 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 I how I know that God don't like this thing that's happening. But after that, I try to remove myself. Sometimes we'll be stuck in certain conditions that we have no choice but to live through some of the darkness and it grows, make you stronger. It make you want to know God even more because when you see people that's living not for God and then when they profess that they don't believe in God, get what I'm saying? And then when you like see this, when you come out and you start preaching to certain people, some of these people will be of your own household. Some of them will be your family. The Bible even said a prophet is not welcome in his own country. So when you come out speaking some things, you'll be surprised how people that you thought was for Christ, they're not. You, you'll be betrayed. Like, you'll try to talk to your dad because he's a Christian and he go to church. But when you tell him, yeah, we need to talk about the gospel, he, he'll tell you things like, well, I, I don't got no time for that right now because what he's going through in life. But he go to church every Sunday. So you got, and on top of that, he go to a church with a woman preacher. So, and yes, I am talking about my dad. So, you get what I'm saying? You'll be betrayed, you'll be hurt by your family, your loved ones, your mom, your dad. But God will never forsake you, he'll never leave you. His word will never say, no, don't get this knowledge. I don't wanna share no information freely with you. I don't wanna give you no wisdom. I don't wanna edify you. God's word will never say that to you. It's always calling on you to, to, to clean up. God want the most dirty, corrupt, crooked, um, wicked people to come to him so he can show you how powerful he is. Anybody that say they a devil worshiper and you say that you don't believe in God, email me so we can, every time I tell, I challenge any email, any rabbi, nobody sends me emails because they must be afraid of me speaking God's word will embarrass them and put them to shame and they'll lose a whole bunch of followers and supporters. If they got a business and they selling like t-shirts and stuff, if I come and have a conversation with them and I talk about the word of God, especially a Muslim on Ramadan, man, they gonna wanna convert, they gonna wanna be a, they gonna wanna be one of Jesus Christ's disciples and they gonna be telling y'all how wonderful and powerful Jesus is and they gonna be quoting scriptures and stuff like that. They ain't gonna be believing in the Quran no more. So that's why a lot of people are skeptical about having that open discussion with me. Because they hear my the knowledge and wisdom that God, all glory be to God, he's given me to give back to the to anyone who has ears, let them hear. So they hear and they know the stuff I'm saying. I even go through the Quran and show y'all where Muhammad lied at in the Quran. He said that he was a messenger from God and he was going to be the last messenger. When, where in the Bible do it say that? Who told Muhammad to call himself a Quran? That's what my stream is going to be about today. It's going to be about how Muhammad, when he created Ramadan, he went against Jesus' prophecies. It's a lot of Muslims that come in the comment section, but they don't post nothing from the Quran to prove how Muhammad was a messenger from God. You notice they always come in here trying to disagree or go back and forth about how Jesus Christ is not God because their Quran taught them to say that Jesus Christ is just a messenger and a prophet. That's what it say. But when we go to Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, these are Moses' disciples right here. And they saying his name will be called the mighty God, the everlasting father. So if y'all got a problem with, 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 the, with him being God, Y'all got a problem with Moses' disciples too. You see how it get dangerous now? Cause I know how to rightly divide the word. I ain't come to bring peace on earth. Jesus ain't come. He said, I came to bring war. You think I come to bring peace on earth? I tell you nay. But two and one house will be divided. So, Y'all make albums. A lot of y'all music artists, they exploit the Christians, the Christians that listening to the uh, 
the music, whether it's secular or mainstream, I don't care who it is. Ain't nobody supposed to be selling no music. Matter of fact, so when we go to church, if somebody go to church and the gospel choir is singing, how much you got to pay them to hear them sing? How much? Did God tell y'all to put y'all songs on Spotify and sell it? Or did he say freely you receive, freely you give? You could call it a talent and say, I'm trying to multiply this and make 10 talents. That's between you and God. I can't go back and forth with that. But all I know is that, that we supposed to be giving this stuff away freely. We ain't supposed to be charging nobody. It's Easter and you got agents working for Satan gotta watch out for these people that be having these these dog paws on the back of their car something a lot of that stuff be suspicious they be the ones driving the most suspect like they stalkers or something like that it seemed like this person wasn't even going this way all of a sudden you following me it just seemed like so i'm a i'm a this why I, when i make my videos i try to be stationed set where i'm at and not driving because i know when i drive it's always cars trying to do things and get a reaction. So, uh, Justine Illusion, may peace be upon you. Morning, spirits. Roger, Reg, Reggie Rogers, peace be unto you. I came live because I'm not recording at the same spot where I always record. I'm going to a new spot. And I'm getting out of the place where I always record at. I'm going to a new spot to record. Yeah, I'm going to a new spot to record. any topics they would like to see me cover all you gotta do is send me an email I don't really be having that much time to do studying and research stuff because I'm working and then I'm making these videos so my time is very limited y'all so if you really want to see certain topics covered or you you want you want to see what certain scriptures the deeper meanings of them or whatever y'all have questions with ask me email me if anybody got a testimony they want to tell you can share your testimony over here any christian music artists any christian businesses anybody want to promote their um business or your music we got to do an interview about God first, and we got to talk about the Word of God, and then you can promote your business. But I'm, I'm willing to assist anybody with getting their name and their, their brand out there. Let me see. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. John Yo. Christ God bless you all. What is Je Where is Jesus buried? When Jesus died, they told the soldiers to guard the um, stone. Don't let nobody get come in here and take his body. They said to guard this tomb with your life. Don't let the disciples come in here and take this body. Don't let nobody come come and take it. But he died and then on the they don't say where, where they don't say what it was he died and they buried him and then he rose on the third day and they couldn't figure it out they thought they was going to keep him in there and they was going to guard the burial grounds where they buried him at secure and safe and he wasn't going to make it out the grave that's what they thought 
they got a rude awakening. I just hope that my connection stay well because I know through certain parts it will start acting up. I, I tell people, Jesus Christ is God. There ain't no other God. Muhammad, ain't no Buddha God. None of them. It's still early, y'all, so I'm out at a good time. It's 7.15 a.m. 7.15 a.m. And I'm trying to get to where I'm going in the next 20 minutes. So I can start this start this stream up. I don't got too much written, so we'll see how this gonna work out today. Sometimes my move my moves is based on how the comments work and how if I don't got a, nothing written down, I'm depending on the comments to come through and add on to the teaching, to the lesson, to the, to the word I'm giving. Whether if they posting scriptures or if they asking ignorant questions, it all it's all for the glory of God. So, but. I got a few scriptures written down. One of my next streams I'm probably gonna do about women adorning themselves with modest apparel. I still can't get over that thing about Christ being king. All of a sudden, they trying to make it look like Christ being king is anti-Semitic. Huh? Christ was a Hebrew Israelite. How is it anti-Semitic if you say Christ is king? They can't even prove that. That just shows that they infringed on someone's religion. That's not an offensive remark. That's like saying Muhammad is a prophet. How, how would that get somebody fired from the job? Them people that did that to Candace Owens was working for the devil. Be safe, brother. Yeah, always. Modesty is a virtue. So much is going on in the world. Yeah, Panama Mule Live. It is a lot going on in this world. And that's why I just put my faith and my trust in God and Christ because this world will leave you going back and forth with all this darkness that's here. If you don't turn on the news and get closer to Christ, the only thing that's bringing us righteousness and, 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 and truth and love is the word of God. This world, you got people in the government calling themselves Democrats and Republicans. Do they got that in other governments? Do they got that in, do the government work against each other? You see, this stuff is crazy. And we think, like, I don't say we, but a lot of people think that they can help people and make laws to help people. They ain't doing nothing but fighting for each other's families. Like, they, they're not helping nobody, really. It ain't like they have a close relationship with the people. They do their little meetings, and it's ran like a gang. Anybody disagree, they attack you. That ain't no justice and freedom. It ain't, this is, like, crazy. They fought the Indians when the Indians said that this is our land. They put them in the reservations and then go in there and infiltrate the reservations and, and do all this corrupt stuff. So they can't have peace on their land when they settled in court and all that stuff. This shows you how dark this world is. How prideful man is. Somebody came, gave me an email and they talk about this thing is this. this it's not nothing to do with the scripture, but it's something to do with Christ. Now, he told me there's a court case going on, and this case been going on for three years. He's talking about some reincarnation of Christ, but I sent them all the scriptures to show them that Christ gave us our spirit, and we he he's living through us. So he started to talk about how the courts are studying this stuff, and this case been going on for three years, about how Christ is reincarnated as certain people, and like he sent me a whole bunch of information then he sent me the file 
I was a little skeptical about clicking on the file because some of this stuff can be viruses and stuff like that. So I told him, is there a website where I can go look up the case and all these documents that you're sending to me? But I, if you want to see, I copy the link and share it to you if you email me. But I'm, I'm a little skeptical about opening that file. But he was like, this case has been going on. I forgot exactly what he said for three years. It's about Christ being reincarnated and living inside of certain people. They took people and did studies and all this stuff he's saying. So, um, it was deep. He left me a long paragraph. And I usually don't go outside the word of God, but it's dealing with my master. So, I want to be able to give a right answer to say whether, um, but I gave him all the scriptures where I, where it talks about how we are new creatures, how all things become new, how we are dead in Christ. This is all talking about reincarnation. Get what I'm saying? I gave him all the scriptures in my email that he sent. So maybe I'll just read that email one day. I won't say his name and do a teaching on it. I'm not looking up that court case. Something just told me, don't say court case Jesus on it or nothing like that. It's just a link with a bunch of uh, letters. I'm skeptical about it. I'm not, I want to believe it, but something told me, God told me, don't don't just be so freely to click on that link. You lose your whole email. You're going to wish you never clicked that link. My whole email get turned over to somebody else. I wish I never clicked that link. Right, brothers and sisters? So you said numbers 23 and 9. I'm driving, brother, but I'm going to still pull out the scriptures and get it, get get working. I'm driving, but I'm going to still do this in decency and orderly and, and um, get this work in, get this word out. Hold up. You said numbers 23 and 19. Hold on. I'm going to show you a rule, so do this. Lord didn't give me the spirit of fear or anything like that. It said Numbers 23 and 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He hath said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Hath he said, and shall he not do it? So God is not a man that he should lie. Or the son of man. So it's letting us know in numbers. This is a beautiful right chapter right here, brother and sister. It say God is not a man right that he should lie it then then it goes back this prophecy of jesus christ right here it says god is not a man that he should lie and then it go it come back and it say neither the son of man neither the son of man so that can be taken two ways the son of man it can mean us the son of man can mean christ too now, God is a spirit. So we know God is not a man. The, the, the meaning that the spirit of God does not lie, but man will lie. But that's the child of the devil. That's how you know the difference between children of God and children of the devil, because the spirit of God will not lie. Matthew 6 and 6, we got Psalms 18 and 11. Hold up. Psalms 18 and 11, and then you got Matthew 6 and 6. Psalms 18 and 11. He made darkness 
his secret place, his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. He made darkness his secret place. He made darkness his secret place. It said the Lord would dwell in a thick darkness. So he made darkness his secret place so he could show his power. That's why when Pharaoh put Moses in slavery, this was listen to the word of the Lord and Moses, tell him I am sent you and go out and keep these commandments. And when Moses sent, you see the power of God working through him. God put the spirit in him and he gave him his power, his word, and he was working through him. You got Matthew 6 and 6. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's Matthew 6 and 6. Oh, that's Matthew 6 and 9. Matthew 6 and 6, it teaches about when Muhammad told the Muslims how to pray, he actually went against a holy law, a spiritual law. So if you go against spiritual laws, their spiritual judgments, their spiritual consequences, their spiritual penalties, I guess. So it says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. See? So it tells us when we pray, we are to enter into, when we pray, enter into our closet and shut the door and pray to our Father, which is in secret. And the Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. I think I'm going to a different place. I'm about to go sit up and get something to eat. And have a comfortable place to sit in instead of sitting in this car. You got Amos 5 and 18. Matter of fact, I ain't gonna go into where the traffic is going. I'll be trying to be low and just stay out the way. But it's uh, every time it's always, you know, we in the world. Oh, I, this world is dark. This traffic everywhere you go, seven o'clock in the morning. Don't nobody care about today being no Easter. They getting out doing what they got to do. Some people got to work. And I'm just trying to get out and just preach this word. I ain't trying to be in this world. This world is darkness. It's evil. I have nothing to get from this world. Nothing. I'm not, you know, I don't get in no holiday spirit. So I don't know what that is. You can't fool me to celebrate something not of God. So I don't know what that is. But all glory be to the Father, man. I just want to get out the way. I've worked two, three hours, four hours. I used to work five and try to work as much hours as I could. I'm taking a lot of sacrifices to glorify God's word. You got Amos 5 and 18. You got Amos 5 and 11. Hold on. Amos 5 and 11, it says, for as much, for as much therefore as you're teaching, as you're treading, you gotta give me a second, bro. I'm not about to put my life in danger anymore trying to do all this. I'm on a curvy road now. I gotta uh, pay attention. 
gotta be a little, gotta be wise instead of bold. I'm trying to be bold when I need to be wise. It's not the time to be bold now. Let me be wise and harmless. I don't want to offend nobody else because they see me driving, reading the Bible and thinking, yo, man, you ain't even paying attention. And then start trying to make drive up on me like I'm doing something wrong. Let me get to a safe spot or I can just get y'all this word. All right, I'm at a light. Amos 5 and 11. For as much therefore as your treading is upon the poor and ye take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone but ye shall not dwell in them ye have planted pleasant vineyards but ye shall not drink wine of them so when y'all quote scriptures if you could post the reason why you're you're saying this scripture and what is it proven what you trying to what do you want me to talk about or what are you trying to um prove with this scripture because it's, it's nothing wrong with y'all just posting scriptures, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be reading it and looking for. What are you trying to, are you just, am I supposed to just read it and then whatever comes, it just come out? Because I don't know what you want me to look for, but I'm going to read Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. Seven thirty still, so it's early. I don't know if I'm going to get breakfast or not. But my heart is like, man, keep recording in this car, cutting my car off, cutting it on. I'm wasting a lot of battery. I'm going inside to record somewhere today. I'm not going to be in this car. I came over on, on another side of town. I should have showed y'all this historical street right here. This street is made of bricks. This is a historical street. It's made of bricks. But this part been, then I guess they built over this part a little bit. But as, like, before I got where I'm at now, it was all bricks. And as you can see, nah, it's all brick back there. As you can see, the bricks on the side. This is. You see the bricks? They covered over. They just, they put this pavement right here and covered this street, but it was all bricks at one time. But listen, y'all. God's word is a sharp, double-edged sword, and it pierces your heart. It, it, it hits you so hard. I'm about to show y'all Where I stayed with my grandmother and my brother used to live right across the street but I never met my brother until I was like 17 years old so we got the same father but different moms obviously so this was my grandmother's house right here it's gonna be a yellow house and it's number 136 this is third street see that yellow house look you see that yellow house I used to stay up in the attic up there. Stay with my grandmother right there. And this blue house right here. Blue house right there across the street. That's where my brother lived, but I never knew him. We used to sit on the porch and my aunts and my cousins used to tell me, you know your brother lived right across the street right there. So that's my brother's house. And that's my grandmother's house when I, where I grew up at. This is where I started going to church. AME Zion Church over here on this side of the water, Newburgh, New York. Started going to AME Zion Church over here. And my uncle was involved with like the Mount St. Mary's. That's like the Catholics and had the summer league. So he was like basketball coach. And then he did like CYO and AAU and stuff like that. This is how my cousin is like real close with Anthony Hardaway, Penny Hardaway. Because he he was a head coach of the college and then he, he left New York and went down south. So now he's doing his thing down south. But that's, I grew up like starting playing ball like 11 or 12 and we was in church 11, 12 years old. 
this the hospital right here where I'm at. So this is where I'll be at when I be recording. But I'm only gonna stay up here for a couple minutes. Yeah, I'm only staying up here a couple minutes. This remind me of um, Mount Olives. I always in my heart, I said, man, this is my Mount Olives. I can't make it to Jerusalem right now. But while, while I got the spirit of God inside me and I've been reading the word, I'm going to bring joy to myself. And I'm a, in my heart, I feel like this is Mount Olives. And can't nobody tell me it's not. I come up here and preach the same way Jesus preached. Galilee was not the suburbs either. Nazareth is the hood. The part where I stay, it's like compared to this town. I won't try to compare and contrast, but it's more love and peace over here. It's more peaceful for me. I don't know about other people. It's two rival towns. People from Poughkeepsie don't rock with Newburgh like that, but my family was born over here, so I get a different type of respect. They don't look at me like I'm from Poughkeepsie. Like they have basketball games and they will fight and stuff like that at the end of the game. You know how you got two rival towns. But I can't wait to just travel the world and preach the gospel, man. I can't wait. I can't wait to travel the world and preach the gospel. Drive safely. Pan over. Panama Mule Live. I'm good. I pulled over. Now, we're going to talk for about 15 more minutes, 10 more minutes, and then I'm going to go to the place where I got to go and pull out these scriptures, and we're going to get to work. I only got a little bit, y'all. I'm going to let y'all. I'm going to be honest with y'all. This is all I have written down. That's it. Y'all know normally I got a page or two. This is it. So Muhammad lied on Moses' disciples. You know, Isaiah is Moses' disciple. I'm going to go into that because Muhammad says Jesus is just a prophet and a messenger. But Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says something different. Muhammad got a problem on this. I mean, not Muhammad, but whoever followed prophet Muhammad. You know, they actually put people to death for calling Muhammad a, a false prophet over in Africa. This troubles me, so it's not. I'm not gonna stop speaking against this. I don't care how nobody feel. Like this is serious, brothers and sisters. Y'all think I'm up here and I'm having enjoyment? No, the stuff I'm saying is putting me in. Damn, I'm putting a target on myself. But I'm bold like that. See, you look. This is why on the Breakfast Club you never hear Angela Yee, Kevin Gates, Kanye West. None of them talk about Allah the way they talk about Jesus, because they know the Muslims. They're scared that Muslims will take their life. If anybody called my prophet Muhammad a false prophet, they say that it's in their law. You go read it. Go read about all the people, what they did when, that, that called prophet Muhammad a false prophet. And then you, you come back and let me know, am I doing the work of the Lord or not? I don't hear nobody else speaking like this. I don't hear no pastors doing this. I'm bold, brothers and sisters. I call out the Hebrews. I call out everybody. I'm on God's side. Ain't no man can't tell me what to do. I didn't take no Freemasonic oath. I speak about what I want to talk about. That's why I said, I come from the heart right here. No, it's not, brother. What you mean, General? God is in you. All those are telling you, first I was trying to tell you. General, first I must be you. Because how do you know this dude that was in my chat like a, a, a few days ago but i don't know if i put them on time out for 24 hours or if i blocked them but he was saying some things that was like some things he was saying made a lot of sense but some of the stuff he was saying it was like you trying to i can't remember exactly what happened with him get the log out of your eye brother ain't no log in my eye 
when you preach for 24 hours, then get back at me, brother. When you preach the word for 24 hours, then get back at me. You haven't loved the Lord with all your heart. You didn't. Show me what, what, tell me what's the most important thing you did for God to show your love towards him. You can't even say, you can't, you got to think about it. See, just like a week and a half, two weeks ago, I preached for 24 hours. People witnessed this. I, I, I preached for 23 and a half hours. I passed out on the 23rd hour for like 20, 30 minutes. Then I got up preaching for the last 30 minutes. So 24 hours preaching and it's still being processed. I sacrificed my body. I did things to show that I love the Lord with all my heart, all my strength, and all my soul. So you could condemn me all you want, but God already said my faith is accounted for righteousness. Wake up, read those in that order. So Romans 12 and two, Reggie Rogers. Let me go through that real quick. Romans 12 and 2. I might have to get something to eat, y'all. So Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we're supposed to be renewed by the transforming of our mind so we can prove what's the perfect and acceptable will of God. So we got to prove what's the perfect, acceptable will of God. How can we not be perfect if we have to prove? That's why I told y'all perfect don't mean what you think it means. Y'all know what that scripture means. Perfect meaning perfect knowledge between good and evil. Because when we read Romans 12 and 2, if, if, if the, if the, if like, the disciples made certain sins. They for, they forsake the children not to come to Jesus. Jesus had to rebuke them. He said, suffer the little children not to come to me. He said, for such is the kingdom of heaven. They said, they said, send the children away. He's tired and stuff like that. Peter forsook him when he went to the cross. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if you're not conformed to this world, but you're a new creature because you renewed your mind with the word of God, you fill just your soul up with the blood of Christ and the flesh of Christ. You eat his flesh, you eat, you drink his flesh and eat, eat his flesh and drink his blood so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God see so we have to prove what is good acceptable and perfect will of God for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith think soberly think soberly you can be thinking um not soberly by saying false gods is gods you could be thinking not soberly by saying jesus christ is not god you could be thinking not soberly by saying these crystals are going to protect me more than god you could be thinking not soberly by saying my third eye is open and i got my chakras aligned up they ain't got nothing to do with putting no smoke in your mouth. It don't. Think soberly. Somebody can be toasted off they um five shots of uh, Garcia Vega. Um, what do they call it? Garcia Vegas, uh, whatever they be having, Jack Daniels, but they still thinking soberly. They still got God word in their heart. The Holy Spirit will dwell in thick darkness. I'm not leading people away from Christ. I don't care how your church traditionally the traditions are. I'm leading everybody to Christ. I don't want nobody to not have God's love and not see who he is and what he is and how powerful he is. Five eleven is a typo. Scroll up. General, I scrolled up enough. 
you said Amos 5.18 and then 5.20. Okay. Amos 5.18 and then 5.20. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. So the day of the Lord that they were talking about is Jesus Christ's birth. When he was born, it was darkness. Harad wanted to kill him. He said, if you don't take, um, we got to take the baby and depart because Harad will seek to kill thee. And then when he got older, he was preaching in the temple that Harad was still looking for him to try to kill him. Jesus said, tell that fox I do cures today. He said, tell that fox I cast out devils today, tomorrow, and the third day. God is in you. All those that are telling you first eye was trying to tell you. I don't care what first eye told anything. If you know the truth, how about you speak some things and we'll talk about it. But I don't know what that dude first eye talked about a couple days ago because it's not clicking right now. So it must have not been that important or that biblical where it's not registering in my brain. I don't remember Whenever you get a chance, I would appreciate it if you can clarify how the enemy tries to deceive mankind and further elaborate. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So when Muhammad started talking about the queen of heaven and stuff like that, there's a scripture in the Old Testament where they was calling somebody the queen of heaven. But them people were worshiping a, a idol that was idolatry. They got, they were rebuked. That's why we were shown that. That wasn't nothing that people were supposed to do because it wasn't never done by any other prophets or you get what I'm saying? So when we learned about that in the Old Testament, th that's where probably Muhammad got it from because he's seen that they were idol, I, doing idol worship and he know that he wanted people to worship him like an idol. So he took everything out the Bible to cause confusion amongst believers and make people think that he was something um, of God or something. So when you see 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, for such are false apostles. He even put the word apostle in the Quran. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing. If his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works. So. Satan transformed himself into an angel of light. So they'll be having you thinking that they're preaching good news or they're preaching something like it's a, a, a good message. But what they're really doing is coming to deceive. And then it says their end will be according to their works. So we'll let you know the works that they do will be the works that destroy them. Muhammad put it in the Quran that if they can lie to certain people, he put it in the Quran that they can go to war with certain people. He put it in the Quran about a jihad or something like that. That's like a religious war or something like that. Now, Jesus never taught us to war physically with people. He said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So, when you go through these teachings, you look at who Muhammad is, what he represented and what he did. And then you look at who Jesus Christ is, what he did and what he represented. It's a complete different, different, two different spirits.
you have one which is the spirit of God and then you have one which is the spirit of error or the spirit of the Antichrist to lie and destroy that's the clarity of the enemy yeah Isaiah 42 16 Isaiah 45 3 and Michael 7 and 8 and Matthew Hold on Isaiah 42 and 16 And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. So God said he will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. And I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. This is the judgment of God. And crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. So this is where I was talking about how God wants you to, to come to him when you are in the most darkness, when you are in the most deepest battles, because he want to clear all that up and clean all that unclean spirits that's living inside of you he wants to clean it up and it goes with he's looking for a broken heart and a contrite spirit now you said Isaiah 45 and 3 for all y'all that want to worship them pictures in Russia let me just read you Isaiah 44 and 9 they that make a graven image are all of them vanity and their delectable things shall not profit y'all want to put these pictures up in the museum and make millions off of them and they are their own witnesses they see not nor know that they may be ashamed see you should be ashamed of yourself telling people to study these pictures that are graven molten images stuff that man drew who hath formed a God or mote in a graven image that is profitable for nothing. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear and they shall be ashamed together. Who's responsible for that picture in Russia? Y'all all should be ashamed of yourself. The smith with the tongues both worketh in the coils and fashioneth it with hammers and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yeah, he is hungry and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water and is faint. You said Isaiah 45 and 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. God said he's going to give us the hidden riches of secret places, the treasures of darkness. It reminds me of the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Once God come in your heart, he changed your heart from being evil, wicked and corrupt and make it righteous, holy and godly. So Christ like. He said, I will give thee the treasures of darkness. This reminds me of a lot of people who was in darkness. They go back to the same neighborhoods or to some of the same people. And they'll preach the gospel to them. Try to get them out of darkness. It's just planting a seed. One water, one plant, one water. God give the increase. So we were in darkness. God pulled us out to become leaders to lead other people out of darkness into the light. Matthew, Michael, chapter 7, verse 8. 
Now, where do you see Michael at, brother? I don't see Michael. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. I can read that. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprang up. So a lot of us almost died. We were supposed to be dead, a lot of us, but we saw the light. And God started to order our steps and show us what we should be doing. And that's when we, we, what we do with that chapter. What does it say? Matthew 4 and 16. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region in shadow of death, light is spring up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Pay attention to how Muhammad treats his enemies and how Jesus treats his enemies. Another good point, Reggie Rogers. Muhammad told the followers of Islam to go to war with anybody who's an unbeliever, who don't believe in Muhammad. And if you call Muhammad from the Quran a false prophet, then they say that they have the, they think that they have the right to take your life. Not to prove that he's not a false prophet, to just go to war with you over words. If I told you that what Muhammad created was one of the biggest cults in America, in the world, y'all would say I'm making this up. But any other man that tell you how to dress, tell you what to think, tell you how to worship God, when you already got a book that's a holy book that'll lead you to God, he's talking about the same people in this book, and he wants you to think that he's going to teach you better than what the book taught you. Muhammad say the word of God is corrupt. He said the, the word of God been tampered and altered. How do we know the Quran ain't been tampered and altered since y'all want to play these games? Y'all ain't none of y'all was alive when Muhammad wrote the Quran, so y'all can't testify and bear witness of nothing. Y'all only going off a of hearsay. Y'all don't have no official documents when the Quran was written on the paper that was written when Muhammad was born. Nobody has it. So how can y'all claim that that's the real word of God and we don't even have the original transcripts what Muhammad wrote? Nobody has that. So how you know that y'all word ain't altered and it's not the original version that he wrote? That's right there shows you it don't mean it's been corrupted, but it shows you that Muhammad didn't write the Quran. Other people wrote it and, and sold it. That's why it's got a copyright on it. Don't the Quran got a copyright? Now, if that was the word of God, why would they put a copyright on it? You ain't supposed to copyright the word of God. See, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Muhammad going to put the word scripture in his Quran and start talking about scriptures and stuff like that. Like he really knew and had understanding of the word of God. If he knew anything about what a scripture mean, he wouldn't have never had all them wives. So why was he talking about scriptures in the Quran like he got all this knowledge? Muhammad ain't nothing but a bold-faced liar! Muhammad a liar! And he gonna take them Muslims to hell if they don't repent and turn from their wicked ways. Every Muslim will die and go to hell. Believing in Muhammad, you will die and go to hell. Because Jesus Christ didn't teach the way how he taught. He told y'all to go to war with people. Jesus Christ said, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you and pray for those who use you and, and persecute you and despitefully use you that you may be called the children of God. Muhammad told y'all to start a jihad if somebody don't agree with, with um, Islam. Start a religious war, he telling y'all. Muhammad kept writing about that jihad because that's what he want. Remember, it said you'll hear wars, rumors of wars.
Muhammad sent military people out to go create wars with people. He was commanding militaries to go out and do things to people. He sent people to go order to um, take lives from people. That's how we know that. The stuff that Muhammad teach is not biblical. Everything that the Muslims say they believe in, it's not the word of God like how y'all think. We got the true and living word of God. That stuff y'all got is an altered version because the Quran came after the Bible. So if it came after, that means he had an opportunity to see everything he wanted to steal from the Bible and twist and turn it. And that's exactly what he did. That's why y'all got the word queen of heaven in there. Muslims don't even believe in heaven like that. They call it paradise. So why Muhammad put heaven in there if y'all don't believe in heaven? See, he got other things that contradict him being a prophet. He telling y'all to create Ramadan. Ain't no Muslim supposed to be celebrating Ramadan right now. Go tell your imam that I said it. Tell him why y'all celebrating Ramadan and Jesus taught us how to pray. If Muhammad thought Jesus was a prophet, why would he go against it? Everybody that are followers of Muslims, they say Muhammad is a prophet. That's why y'all listen to him and celebrate Ramadan. But if Jesus told us how to pray and fast, why would you celebrate Ramadan? You will follow the same, the same way you followed Prophet Muhammad, he would have followed Jesus if he thought he was a prophet. Y'all see what I'm saying now, right? See, I ain't come to play no games. I came to destroy all the lies of Islam. Everybody that think that Islam is true or Muhammad found the truth or he's going to bring you to paradise or get you closer to God. I came to destroy it because it's all lies. It's built off of pride and, and, and being proud. Muhammad was a proud man. He wanted to have all them wives. That's pride. That's not the spirit of God moving him. The spirit of God didn't move on Muhammad. You have more scriptures. All right, hold on one second, General. I'm going to get to your scriptures. Give me one second. So the spirit of God was not moving on Muhammad. It was not. Muhammad was not being led by the spirit of God. He was being led by the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of error. He's seen all the great things that Jesus did, and he wanted to go against it. So he created all these different traditions of men, Ramadan, not of God. If God say to keep the Sabbath and keep it holy, why y'all don't do that? Because they don't believe in Moses, they believe in Jesus. They ain't say nothing about how Moses was a prophet. They believe in Jesus because they know that's where the power is at. See, they, Muhammad attacked where the power was at. He's seen that. The most powerful name on earth is Jesus. This is the only name that men must call on to be saved. And he said, I want I want that power. Like Simon the sorcerer. He couldn't come to the followers or disciples of Jesus Christ and try to buy it like Simon the sorcerer. Because he knew he would have got the same. Your money perish with you. Your heart is not right with God in this matter. So he came crafty. He came doing witchcraft. And saying I'm creating a new religion but you taking stuff out the Bible if you creating something new why are you taking stuff that's old you see you're contaminating it you're corrupting it if I'm building a new house why would I take pieces from an old house you see this get dangerous when y'all come up against the truth and y'all try to exalt Muhammad higher than the knowledge of God y'all will all be put to shame and embarrassed because I'm not playing no games about my God Maybe the reason why the Muslims take people lives when they say Muhammad is a false prophet, because it's true. It's true. If I told you your daughter was really a man, if it ain't true, would you do? Would you take my life? So you gotta look at it like that. Muhammad ain't do nothing but raise up a lot of emotional men and women to put their trust in something that's going to forsake them. Muhammad going to forsake y'all. He already forsook y'all when he taught y'all to celebrate Ramadan and how to pray. He, all right, watch this. Watch this, y'all. We're going to talk about this in the stream. When Muhammad made the prayers, he gave y'all five different names of each prayer that y'all supposed to pray, right? Y'all really don't think Muhammad stole from the word of God? 
So why he named one of the prayers Salah? Salah is in the word of God. He took that from the book of prophecy, from the holy scriptures. So why Muhammad take all this stuff from the scriptures? He even named one of y'all prayers Salah. Now we all know that was mentioned many times in the word of God. So if you Arabic, why are you using terms that was mentioned in the Hebrew Israelite Bible? Huh? Can Muhammad answer that? Can any Muslim answer that? They don't have no answers because they know Muhammad stole. He getting caught red handed. His hands in a cookie jar trying to take prophets of God words and twist them and twist them out of context. Muhammad rests on them scriptures as he did all the other scriptures to his own destruction. It says their works would be their destruction. Didn't it say that, brothers and sisters? Didn't we just read that? Their works would be their destruction. So his works was his destruction. It's just people still want to follow it because they want to cause destruction in other people's lives and they want to hide behind religion. Because they're not leading people to Christ. They're telling you, follow Muhammad. When you join and become a Muslim, you are forced to believe that Christ is not God. You are forced. They're forcing people to believe in a lie. See, I get real deep with this. I know how to attack, like, real serious. Like, this is these are spiritual bullets I'm shooting out y'all right now. I'm hitting every Muslim in the, in the world with spiritual bullets bullets i'm a spiritual sniper for god when it comes to god i'm like the secret service psalms chapter 18 verse 11 psalms 18 and 11 He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Psalms 97 and 2. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Psalms 112 and 4. Unto the upright, there riseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. So, God will never tempt you above what you can handle, but he will always give you a way to escape the temptation. That's the word, general. You have no idea what you're talking about. You need to slow down. Stop spamming. He said, you spamming, brother. Now he said goodbye because he know somebody about to come in here and correct you. Pat King, that's why I follow you, brother. All glory be to God. Be careful, brother. This general guy could be an insult to your knowledge and understanding. Yeah, I know because he's quoting scriptures that have like you talking about darkness and stuff like that but i'm proving that yeah god will dwell in darkness but so i don't get what he's trying to say he's not saying nothing he's just posting scriptures and saying yeah this 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 but what does it mean what is what are you trying to prove be careful good He's being an insult to his own life. He's talking about new age mysticism, talking about a third eye and stuff. Helena, hello, peace be upon you. Good morning, motor oil. 
I don't celebrate Eastern motor oil, but may peace be unto you and good day. I hope all is well with you and your family. Hope y'all are enjoying life. Hope you and take this time out to, to speak to people about Christ, teach people about Christ, bring them closer to Christ. Sometimes as followers of the word of God, of followers of truth, we look into certain things like holidays and stuff and we put ourselves down. But sometimes you gotta just stay in the spirit of God. And when these holidays do come around, use it to, to enlighten, to teach about Christ, to preach Christ. Yeah, use it to preach about Christ. Give me one second, y'all. I'm almost done. And I'm coming right back. I got started off late today. And I wanted to come over on the other side of the water and make the video. So I'm finally here. I got to find a spot to record because I don't want to be in this car. If I do, I want to be close to where I can charge my phone if, I, if, if any problems happen. This phone has been giving me a lot of issues with holding charge. Last night, I had it on the charger all night, and it didn't even hold charge. Sometimes I'll have to cut the phone off so it can actually hold the charge. I might have messed up my battery a little, charging it too much overnight and leaving it on all night. But all is well. As long as I got time to talk, I'm going to come on here and preach. Chakras is literally bondage. Yeah, a night. Dealing with all that chakras and stuff like that, 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 that moves the presence of God away from you. Cause you saying that I got the power to to um to do everything that God's supposed to do. It's all inside of me, and I just gotta line up these chakras and, and, and meditate and all this stuff. You ain't meditating on the word. You meditating to the devil. That's what they think. Are you live right now, my brother? How you get in here without a name? This dude just got a, a, a icon picture with no name. That's the first time I've seen that. Yes, we're live right now, brother. Good to see you in here, brother. People believe that it's going to enlighten you, but actually it doesn't. It just puts you into a bondage and plunges you into darkness. Yeah, all of them chakras and opening your third eye. That's like, it's, a, it's, it's witchcraft. It's the spirit of divination. You are relying on something other than the power of God to do things that God can do. That's for idolatry too. You become, you become an idolatrous when you start idolizing different items and things and books and lessons and teachings to telling you, if I meditate and I, hold my feet in a circle like Buddha taught me, then I can get a connection with the universe and stuff like that. These dudes talk like they're in harmony with the sun. They want to take their feet off and stand in the grass and stuff like that. You got Hebrews mixing up New Age with um, Old Testament. They mixing the Torah with the New Age and stuff like that. Do you read the future? Nah, we supposed to take it day by day. Angel 7 7 says, Happy Easter. I celebrate Jesus and I worship Jesus, but I don't celebrate no holidays. But may you enjoy today. Hope you have a beautiful day. Matthew 28 6.
Let me go there real quick. I didn't get to start my stream yet, y'all, so I might stay a little longer on here. And when I come back and do my stream, we'll see how that work out. Matthew 28, 6. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. So Matthew 28, 6, the risen Christ. But there's a scripture where they said, they guarded that. They guarded that thing. And they said. It says in Matthew chapter 27, verse 62. This is where I talked about how they said a watch when they buried Jesus. They put the soldiers around and told them to guard this burial site. Don't let his disciples come and take away the body. And this is when he rose on the third day. Watch. Matthew chapter 27, verse 62. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting the watch. Sealing the stone and setting the watch. Now it's time for me to move. Car starting to overheat. It's time to move. God is so good. God is so good. We about to go to work, y'all. I just want to speak about this stuff about Muhammad real quick. Because I'm bold as a lion. Muhammad ain't know what he was talking about when he made Islam. Sometimes people just have to learn the hard way and that requires them suffering and potentially coming near to their own death. That's what happened to me, Knight of King. I had to learn the hard way. When I was leaning on my own understanding, when I was following, see the man who I was following, he said that all authority that he got come from Quran. So he was, he was honoring Prophet Muhammad the dude that I was following. So this is why when I speak out, I speak against Muhammad a lot because he was like the leader over the dude I was following. He said, all of our authority come from the Quran of Mecca. That's what he said. And he was talking about like the holy city and all this stuff that the Muslims believe in. So when, when I was believing in that stuff, it was so much division. These people never acted like brothers. When I went through certain things, when the FBI came to my house, I seen a lot of them Muslim people turn and change and stop treating me like love. It was, they was, they, they like funny type people. And I, I'll never forget how them people act that call themselves Moors and stuff like that. They are some funny people. They are Freemasons working in the government to sell out people. And I, I just can't really say anything other than that because I seen all the leaders of them temples, they call themselves Grand Sheiks, but they um working against each other ain't nobody trying to team up unless they they say you they call you they say you're not a real more if you don't join the temple that's an organization then it ain't no nation that's what made me so mad against this whole nationality thing because i was deceived and lied to by um disingenuine men men who was not upright men who wasn't righteous unrighteousness men men who was walking in deceit wickedness lies that's an organization they was all about they was telling people to pay dues and stuff in some of them temples so i know that's freemasonic stuff and it, and it took me a while to get through this and learn about it i'm over here shooting masonic signs at the police and all this stuff going to court shooting masonic signs at the like man brothers and sisters i've been through too much for real i've been through too much 
I was wearing Moroccan flags, going into court with Moroccan flags on my back, brothers and sisters. I thought I thought I had to like I'm walking up and down the street with Moroccan flags on me and all this. Like I, I was bold. I always been bold. I always like yell and scream at the top of my lungs when I'm speaking against things that I'm fighting against. Right? So this spirit always kind of like been on me. But it wasn't it wasn't righteous judgment. It was according to the flesh. It was whatever I thought and I feel. I was leaning on my own understanding. So God took the same pain and stress and, and boldness I had and, and put it where it needed to be at and, 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 and put that anger and that stress and that pain and that boldness in the right direction. So now when I come out and I speak, I'm not saying things that is harmful or hurtful to people's ears. I'm saying things that's edifying and that's what the devil hates when he can control you he know you you are you if you being destructive and you lean on your own understanding it's only a matter of time before somebody destroy you or you destroy yourself so the devil loves that he enjoys that he kick back and watch get some popcorn sell bet bet gamble on it um you know certain people send people your way they like that stuff but when you quiet and humble and you just speak the word of God. I put that word on the devil head and he know he got a problem. So he's going to try to do everything he could to get you off of the word of God, to get you to not talk about the word of God or to ask you questions about the word of God that you can't answer biblically kind of. You get what I'm saying? If God this, then why this? But it's always a biblical answer for every question. But they will try hard to trick you up. They're going to team up. They, they legions. Remember, they come back. He said, my name is Legion for we are many. So that's what they do. They come back with more unclean spirits. Man, he, he when, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he, he searches through his house and he find it empty. Then he leave and go back and find seven other deadly spirits more wicked than him. And they dwell there. And the, 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 the last place of that man is worse than the first. So that's the same thing what we go through with all this wickedness. I got you, brother. You got Jeremiah 14. Catholic, Catholics worship the queen of heaven. Thank you, brother. I love you so much, Topper. I love you so much. I, that's, see, all I need to see is certain brothers that's on, we all on the same accord, and y'all say one thing, and it's going to pop up with what I need to say and what I need to teach. The reason why Muhammad put in the Quran that something about the queen of heaven, that's because that... That's because Catholics taught that Mary is the queen of heaven, like the brother Topper just said. So if you look at this, Muhammad got all that knowledge from a Catholic monk, didn't he? When Muhammad was in the cave, when he thought Satan came and talked to him the first time, then he said, Angel Gabriel. Before all that happened, Muhammad had some encounter in the discussion with a Catholic monk. That discussion that Muhammad had with that Catholic monk is where he started talking about Mary is the queen of heaven. He learned that nowhere else. Nobody told him that. So where else would he get this revelation from a Catholic monk? The Catholic church took apart seven parts, took out seven parts from the Bible. So when we thinking about and when we talking about how the, the uh, Catholics they have a they have like they call a Catholic a priest so they do certain things that we see it don't add up with the New Testament with the Word of God if y'all were saying y'all were priests under the Old Testament then you have to follow all them Old Testament laws and keep all of them commandments from the Levitical priesthood they're not saying like they're priests from the Old Testament because they don't keep all the law from the Old Testament. Them brothers, they, look, they say they priests, but they walk around with crucifixes on their waist. Tell me how that makes sense. See? Nobody don't want to accept this and, and, and really evaluate it and, and see what does it really mean? They call themselves priests, but they walk around with wooden crosses on their on they waist.
One thing I could say that I've seen about them Catholic priests, I don't know if they're Catholic or not. I think they are. He was in an all black, I won't call it a robe, but it was like a one piece. That's the only thing I could say that's good about them. They're not worldly when it comes to being like dressed in a certain way. You got the Baptists and um, the preachers in the, in the churches, they wear suits. Nobody told y'all to wear suits. Jesus ain't wear suits. We had the word of God before we had suits. So who deceived y'all to make you feel that this dressing in this suit is, is a representation of how Christ wants you to look? God didn't tell y'all to wear suits in the word of God, so who made it up? We got to see. We got That's a whole nother studying. That's another teaching right there, brother. We're going to have some fun on that one, brothers and sisters. Who invented, who incorporated wearing suits to church? Because Jesus ain't tell us to wear suits. He, They wore garments and stuff. That ain't no garment, brothers and sisters. When they say they ripped his garment and stuff like that, they wasn't wearing suits. So we got teaching coming for that. We had the word of God before suits. So somebody that was worldly told them people, everybody wears suits to church and they did it. But businessmen wear suits. You go to the car dealership, they're going to have on suits. So are y'all in business or y'all in Christ? Like I'm like, I'm questioning this. People that work in the government wear suits. You get what I'm saying? When did suits get incorporated? That's something that's important. Because when we break down and tear down this subject, this will teach y'all why certain people say, oh, it's a shame if a man have long hair and don't dress this way, but dress this way. Like they want to teach you how to dress. It's going to break down all of that when we go through these teachings. Lord willing. Now we're going to get through this chapter for you. Jeremiah 4 and 4. Give me one second. I'm just getting here to this store. to go in here and get some breakfast and just sit in here and use some time to charge my phone since it's only on 35 percent instead of just keep sitting in this car yo you got jeremiah 44 but you don't got the chapter and verse Ak Abiezer, Elijah, Israel, Shalom. So let me see what he got on Jeremiah 44. Then I'll come to your comment. I might just start the teaching and, and, and do it on this live. Jeremiah 44. Israel's sins brought to desolation. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwelt in the land of Egypt, which dwelt at Migdal and at Tapanes and at Nop. And in the country of Patro, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein, because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, and that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they knew not, neither they ye nor your fathers how be it i sent unto you all my servants the prophets rising early and sending them saying oh do not this abominable thing that i hate but 
They hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. Wherefore, my fury and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. Therefore now, thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls to cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling out of Judah to leave you none to remain. And that ye provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, whether, whether ye be gone to dwell, that ye might cut yourselves off and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humbled even unto this day. Neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. So this is the same thing going on to this day. We see a lot of people, they want to have women preachers. They're not walking in the statutes of the Lord. They want these women to run the church when men are sitting in the back up just saying, yeah, go ahead and, and, and blasphemy God. Blasphemy the Holy Spirit every day that you live in. Then you got some of these women preachers burning a license and telling the uh, pastor they gonna follow him. They watch his videos and he made them burn a license. Not they read the Bible and the Bible made them burn a license. They watched Pastor Geno Jennings and he made them burn a license. He's not God. He didn't create the word of God. The first pun, the first one that preached about no women being no preachers was Jesus Christ's disciples. Jesus Christ was the first one to preach it because he told his disciples and then they told us. So Gino Jennings didn't preach. You heard him preaching. You ain't hear him preaching. You heard the gospel. Say it rightfully. Y'all giving people too much credit for, for something that they didn't create. They don't own the word of God. This woman says she seen Gino Jennings preaching and she burned her license up. But what was he preaching? You heard the word of God and you burned your license up. It ain't got nothing to do with him. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Just as he said what happened. Come and see where his body was lying. Yep. They thought that they they thought that he was going to be in that grave and they was going to secure it and guard it until my Lord and Savior hopped up out of that grave and got, and got up out of there. And they, they didn't know what happened. They knew he said he was going to rise on the third day. If they didn't believe that he was the Christ, if they didn't believe that he was God, why would they tell them people to guard that graveyard gravesite after he was already dead? They knew he was going to rise again. That's why they said, don't let his disciples come and take the body or nothing. Leave it in here. They wanted to see, is he really going to rise again? Because if they knew if they would have took that body, they ain't know what would have happened. So they said, keep him here. And what happened? He still rose. And they, they wanted to see it. That's why they was guarding it so they was guarding it so close. They said, if he do rise from the dead, we're going to be here to see it so he can't get out. He rose from the dead and probably walked right through them or whatever happened. He, they couldn't stop him. We know that. Matthew 24, 24, King James Version 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Yeah. Satan masquerades as an angel of light, which is why we must always be wary and cautious of what others teach. Yeah. So true. And then thanks for the clarification, brother. A lot of our people need to hear that. The world need to hear that. Good morning, Candace Foster. Peace be unto you. Muslims. Okay, so Muslims of Islam do not worship Mary. 
they do worship a false idol, but it's actually Catholics who have exalted Mary as the queen of heaven. Yeah, so when they worship Muhammad, that's idol worship. Muhammad ain't no leader. He ain't gonna get you closer to God. Muhammad was a false prophet. All the Muslims, Jesus Christ loves y'all. Muhammad didn't believe Jesus Christ was a prophet because he taught y'all to create Ramadan going against Jesus Christ's prophecies. But if you repent and turn from your wicked, evil ways, Jesus Christ will accept you and he will, won't remember all the times you was at war with him and you was his enemy. In Hinduism, they teach that the Hindus, their God is a tiger. I don't know if y'all knew that, but the Hindu people, they their God is a tiger, like a real living life animal, tiger. That's their God. In Hinduism, they teach that when you're opening up your chakras, there's a serpent energy that ascends and coils from the bottom of your spine all the way up to the crown of your head. So we know that's just, that's, that's dealing with witchcraft. Because we know rebelliousness is as the sin of witchcraft. So when in Hinduism and they tell you a serpent energy, the Bible don't speak nothing about energy. It speaks about power. It speaks about power. That's the source of all energy. If we don't have no power, ain't nobody lights turning on. Cut the electricity grids down. Cut the power down. Guarantee you ain't nobody going to have no lights, no water, no nothing. You talking about energy. Not you, brother. I'm just saying the people who believe in Hindu, they believe in energy. Not you, brother. Allah is the truth. Allah holds the truth and lies. He's the most truthful liar. Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, who created the Quran, who created Islam, he told the most truth and lies. He's the most truthful liar. Without no lies, it wouldn't be no Islam. I rebuke Allah in the name of Jesus and every unclean spirit that's living inside you Muslims. I command to come out in Jesus' name. I command them, them devils to come out in Jesus' name and you to repent and turn from your wicked ways because God is love, but Allah is hate. Y'all got the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing God said he hate. When y'all sacrifice y'all fool, who y'all praying to? To the devil. If Muhammad taught y'all how to pray and he was a pedophile, who is y'all praying to when y'all say y'all prayers over y'all food? Muhammad told y'all to pray five times a day, but he gonna steal the word of God from the Salah and say that's a part of y'all prayer. He ain't create nothing. He gonna steal the word prophet from the word of God. He put the word apostle in the Quran. Muhammad wasn't nothing but a deceiver, false apostle, false prophet. That's who Muhammad was, a liar. They got the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Sacrificing food to devils. When y'all pray over y'all food, y'all not praying in Jesus name. So therefore it's idol worship and you praying to the devil. That's food sacrifice to idols. Now back to the topic of the chakras and Kundalini. There are gurus such as Sad Hu Guru who said that Quickly elevating that kundalini spirit can cause you to lose your mind and become insane. You hear that? Quickly elevating your kundalini spirit can cause you to lose your mind and, and become insane. Because you're thinking you're getting all this knowledge coming from yourself. And you're leaning on your own understanding. And fools hate wisdom. Fools despise instruction. So that's to lead them to, to their demise. It says whose end will be according to their works. Their works is gonna be their end. We just read that, that's the word. So they entertain false doctrines, false idols, devils. Muhammad is trying to call prophet Isaiah a liar when Isaiah said his name will be called the wonderful counselor, the mighty God. The mighty God mean he's God. Everlasting father mean he's the father. Who Muhammad to say he's just a messenger or he's just a prophet. You lying on Moses disciples. You're lying on the word of God, Muhammad. This ain't no game. Y'all can't show nothing that proved that Muhammad is a prophet beside him calling himself a prophet. Other prophets called Jesus a prophet before he was born. Y'all don't want to play with my God. 
This gets serious when you come up with them lies against the power of God. I'm walking with the power of God, not my own power. All glory be to God. Muhammad and the Muslims are false idol worshipers whose end will be according to their works. God said you'll know them by their fruits. Can a corrupt tree produce good fruit? Nor can a good tree produce corrupt fruit. So we are fruit inspectors. We check and see what's the perfect will of God. And we have to do this. Ain't no Buddha, no perfect will of God. Ain't no Muhammad, no perfect will of God. None of y'all got the perfect will of God, but Jesus Christ. If the book of prophecy tells us there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So who is Muhammad to call himself a mediator and changing up trying to say God's name is Allah and he going to get you closer to him or something like that. So you saying that Jesus ain't the mediator between God and man? Don't add up. Muhammad is the last prophet. Islam is growing too many Bibles out there. Stop. All right, put it like this. You got to look at it like this. If Muhammad was truly a prophet, why do Islam got so many de denominations? Why you got the Moorish Science Temple that call itself Muslims? Why you got the Nation of Islam that call itself Muslims? Why you got Sunni Muslims, Shiite Muslims? If Muhammad was a truly a prophet, all Muslims would be one. Muhammad is not a true prophet of God, but he was a false prophet of the devil. I say all of this in details because I was once possessed with the Kundalini spirit when I was in the occult prior to finding the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, we all was in, in that darkness, believing in that chakras, when crystals, we all, we all believed in it. If you didn't believe in that, you believed in other doctrines that wasn't of God. This is why Christ is king. I just pray for understanding. Yeah, pray for wisdom and knowledge like Solomon. Muhammad is the best man that ever lived, ex-Christian here. It's all based on emotion, the church, less screaming and dancing like mad people. See? Oh, okay. Can I have a bagel, please? Um, this is a wheat one. Uh, we have a multi-grain flat. I'll take a plain. A plain so bagel? Yeah. You want it spice and toasted? Yes, please. What's the cheapest drinks you got? I just take a small drink. You got orange juice? I take a small orange juice. With the other drink? Oh no, just the orange juice. Did you want cream cheese with that bagel? Yeah. Um, no, I just take butter. Yeah. You want butter? Yeah, just butter. Cause cream cheese is cost, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll just take butter. From here, take out. Here. And are you up in our reward member? I'm um, uh... the. Level B six. Okay. So. Let me see. There's a certain knowledge that isn't knowledge at all, but it's just deception. Yeah, they said. Satan transformed himself as an angel of light. So, Muhammad said he's the last messenger, but nobody told Muhammad that he's a prophet. He told himself he was a prophet. Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, prophesied Jesus' birth of the Prince of Peace. They said he would be called the mighty God. So that means he's God. They said he would be called the everlasting father. So that means he's the father, he's the son, and he's the Holy Spirit. Three that bear witness in heaven. Father, Jesus Christ, prophesied in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the everlasting Father, Son, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. So, when we go through the Old Testament, we showing you prophets that never got a chance to meet Jesus, that prophesied that he would come and what he would be called and what he would do. They prophesied how he would die on the cross, how they would break none of his bones. They never even met him. But... Muhammad claimed that he got all these revelations and prophecies. Who told y'all about Muhammad before he called himself a prophet? Nobody. So he made that stuff up. 
Jesus Christ loves everyone, but in order to see him, one must be changed. Attitudes and behaviors must be changed. Oh, I'm glad I found a Christian channel. Amen, brother. Praise the Lord. If Muhammad is the best of creatures, why don't you take up after his lifestyle, Abdul? Muhammad was a pedophile. He married Aisha when she was like nine years old or something like that. Anybody that prays that's a Muslim and you claim that Allah taught you how to pray five times a day, a pedophile taught you how to pray. So this is for every Muslim. Share this video to at least five Muslims. And y'all need to know that Muhammad was molesting that little girl Aisha when he was in that relationship with her. So every Muslim that put on a turban and pray, you are praying devil demonic prayers. The devil taught you how to pray. It's not of God. If a pedophile taught you how to pray, thank you. How can you claim that this is righteous and holy and anything? It's not getting you to God. It's bringing you closer to the shaitan. Ain't that what y'all call it? The shaitan? That's who Muhammad's bringing y'all closer to. Not God. But if you follow Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, he will bring you to God. The true and living God. Y'all worship what y'all don't know. We worship what we do know. And our witness is true. Nobody witnessed Muhammad being a prophet but himself. I told you Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and there's many other prophets and teachings that told you that Jesus Christ will come and do miracle signs and wonders and he will save Israel. They say it's going to be a ruler. And then how he came and changed up the whole order of the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek not of Aaron's son, not, not Aaron priesthood, but out of Judah. And he changed the law. He made a change in the law too. Not just a change in the office of priesthood, but from physical law. I mean, the law of stone and tablets, the law of flesh to the law of spirit, to the law of Christ. If Muhammad is the best of creatures, why don't you take up after his lifestyle, Abdul? Isn't it all one? I, another person work uh, or stories Bible and Quran and all other yeah Muhammad tried to put the scriptures in the Quran and all that stuff but he didn't post no scriptures he, he told you what he think and he feel about the scriptures he didn't put exactly what the scriptures say he put the word scriptures in the Quran so it lets you know he been studying but he ain't been studying to edify he been studying to deceive exactly what he did deceive the whole world Islam is not a religion, it's a cult. It's the biggest cult in America. Y'all are the modern day Pharisees. Y'all not Muslims. You don't even believe in God. I'm here, I'm telling you, I'm telling you you don't believe in God. Can't no Muslim, imam, rap, no imam or nobody can't prove what I'm saying wrong. I'm here to testify and let y'all know, if you a Muslim, you never knew God or you never seen God. But if you looking at me, you seen this. You've seen the spirit of God. If you're looking at me in the spirit and listening, you see the spirit of God. Too many converting to Islam too late. Tell me. All right. The Bible's originally in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Why do Muslims kiss the black stone? Oh, wow. How stupid is a rock holy? They kiss a black stone and they call some specific rock holy. But when we go into the word of God, I'm gonna to get to this lesson too, but when we go into the word of God, it says, let's start off Let's start off with this. It says the Magi's visit. It says in Matthew chapter two. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? So they said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? He was born a king. Muhammad wasn't born no king. He was a grown man when he started to make Islam. See, this is a difference. It's a different spirit. It's a different connection with God because they don't have no connection with God. Their connection with who they think is God is the shaitan, which is the devil, Satan. 
now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea art now the last among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Now it tells us we're only supposed to worship God. That's in the law. That's in the that's in Exodus. That's in the Old Testament. It say only God, we only supposed to worship God. These wise men worship Jesus Christ when he was born. Show me any scriptures, anybody that worshiped Muhammad when he was born. You can't find it. He was a grown man. He got all this knowledge from a Catholic monk and then decide he want to call himself a prophet. Jesus was born king. I'm going to read it again. Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? No, he grew up and called himself the king of the Jews. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? See, complete difference. Complete difference. If you're a Muslim watching this, you're going to be put to shame. By the end of this, my intentions of my heart is to have you screaming hallelujah and I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. That's where my heart is at. That's my intentions to save your soul from death. Because God don't care about how you feel. He care about your soul. And y'all Muslims, y'all got off the highway of um, salvation. And y'all turned down Shaitan Road, which is Satan's drive. And then you teamed up with a bunch of legions. My name is, my name is Legion, for we are many. So all these fallen angels worshiping Muhammad and worshiping Islam is showing you that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way and the life. Why would you join something with a man that's a pedophile? Prophet Muhammad, who created the Quran, who created Islam, was and is a pedophile. Every Muslim that joined the Muslim community, you are taking relationships and spiritual ties with pedophilia. Y'all talking about Diddy for sex trafficking. What about the Muslims following the pedophile? See, don't nobody want to get real with it. I get real with it. I don't care how y'all feel. Don't nobody care how y'all heathens feel. It's either God's way or you will die in your sins. You will die in your sins or you're going to follow the, the truth, the way, and the life. That's it. There's no other way. It's either you can continue to be a liar, live a lie, or accept the truth. Y'all Muslims super prideful. Y'all violent. Y'all want to carry guns. Y'all want to wear jewelry and all this prideful, prideful stuff. Y'all might as well be gay. Prideful. All this proud stuff. Y'all want to drive in the best cars just like the world. Y'all ain't no separate and set apart. Y'all go out the Muslim mosque and try to get an expensive car. You want to live lavishly. All the Muslims in Dubai, they try to live like kings. They not humble. That ain't humble. They got all these big million dollar houses and all this stuff. They make them women go out there and do rituals and, and, and give them money. This where all this, the trafficking and all the human traffickers, them people in Dubai doing the same thing P. Diddy did. Why y'all ain't going after the Muslims in Dubai that's making the women eat their own feces and stuff like that, giving them millions of dollars. Them Muslims out there so corrupt. They do a lot of the stuff that y'all uh, was a legend P. Diddy was doing. They doing it out there. It's just that y'all can't give them no crimes because it's a different country. So America can't stop them. This is why they can't stop Russia from doing certain things and stuff. That's why I said I'd rather talk to a president from a different country. If you talk to the president over here, they might send their own government after their own citizens. They've been killing their own citizens since this government started. I'd rather talk to a president from a different country. We'll get more things done. Tell Vladimir Putin to um, email me so we can sit down and talk privately, publicly.
No Christian has learned the actual language of the Bible. Jesus never told you to, to speak in Hebrew. He talked in Hebrew, but he never when, when he told them to go preach the gospel, when they went into Asia, they had to know how to speak whatever language they spoke. So this is where you get speaking in tongues. They were speaking new tongues. They spoke Aramaic. They spoke Greek. They spoke Hebrew. And that's what the Bible was translated from Aramaic, Greek, Hebrew to English. So how can a stupid rock cleanse your, cleanse your sins? The Muslims go and call this rock holy. They got to take their pilgrimage or something like that. The same thing Malcolm X was talking about. They take their pilgrimage. They go to Saudi Arabia and they worship a rock. Not the creator, the creation. God created all these rocks. We go into Genesis and we learn. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the darkness was on darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. So God created the heaven and the earth and everything that was on it. The, the grass. We learn about all this on the first, second, and third day in, in, the, in the book of Genesis. So when Muhammad came and told y'all to go worship this rock, what is that? That's not idol worship. That's the same thing Russia did when they put out them graven images of them pictures that's uh, um, graven images, right? They want y'all to commit idolatry, practicing witchcraft, telling you that these statues that they pulled out is the black ancient Hebrew Israelites. It ain't no black ancient Hebrew Israelites, nothing. They spoke Aramaic, yeah. The original New Testament is Greek, and it's the same thing that is translated in English. That's the only thing about these stories. They have the music playing, and sometimes this music will uh, bleed through the, the, the uh, stream and copywriting it. I might have to go to a different store. Maybe a, um, Wendy's don't got music playing like this. You said, watch Sam Shamon. He knows both the Quran and the Bible very well. And he is a Christian. It's not about knowing the Bible and the Quran very well. It's about using the Bible to execute judgment against all unrighteousness. It say the Holy Ghost will come and reprove the world of sin. It didn't say the Holy Ghost will come and show love to sinners. It said to reprove the world of sin. You not judging nobody if you tell them what God said. I'm supposed to see you committing adultery and not say nothing, right? Not say it's wrong. You know it's wrong. God said it's wrong. You don't want you don't want to be rebuked because you don't want to confess and repent and turn from your wickedness. I get it. Let's go to the teachings on fasting. When you fast, don't be like the hypocrites who love to be seen of men. Moreover, when ye fast, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. So it's telling us, don't be like the hypocrites. They disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. When Muhammad told y'all to go create Ramadan, when Muhammad told y'all to celebrate Ramadan, y'all appear to men to fast. If Muhammad believed Jesus was a prophet, why would he create Ramadan? That's war. That's act. That's vibe. That's you trying to tell people to go against a prophet that you believe in and you want people to follow you. This is why when I come through these teachings, your heart should be changed. And you say, I don't want to be a Muslim no more. Throw all them turbans in the trash. Throw all them Qurans in the trash. You could burn them up for all I care. I don't want to be a Muslim no more. Muhammad from the Quran was a false prophet. Y'all ain't going to kill me like y'all did them Nigerians. Because I'm protected by the spirit of God. I don't know what they was doing and what, how much darkness they was involved in. You got preachers out here going to Saudi Arabia wearing Muslim hats and stuff, but they preachers of the Bible. How about this? 
a lot of these preachers are Freemasons, so they won't see nothing wrong with glorifying Muslims. That's where you get Krishlam. Christian and Islam. What the hell is that? Krishlam. That's the devil straight out the pits of hell. The word of God is the truth, and that's why it's so powerful against all the lies of the enemy. Yeah. If God said, lean not on your own understanding and all our ways, trust in the Lord, and he will direct our paths. Why did Muhammad lean on his own understanding and create Islam? Nobody told him to speak like that and make up words that's not in the Bible. Ain't no prophet of God from the Old Testament to the New Testament made up their own words and said, believe in this. They all spoke the words of the prophets before Idolatry was always called idolatry. Witchcraft, worship God, everything was always the same. Jesus ain't come and change nothing. He fulfilled the laws. The reason why you'll never find a Muslim speaking against Christianity, because they know we come with the double-edged sword to cut your spirit and soul, divide and spirit and divide the soul and spirit asunder, and we know your intentions of your heart. If you do speak out, You'll be speaking out against your own prophet because he stole from Jesus. Jesus ain't steal from Muhammad. So that's why y'all can't speak out against Christianity. If you do, it's off with your heads in the spiritual realm. Off with your head. I don't know what Christians y'all knew, but Christians ain't weak. Christians the only one that rebuke witches and warlocks going up in the magic um, witchcraft stores that fortune tellers with the crystal balls and rebuke them and say, you know this is witchcraft. You don't see Muslims doing that. So they must be okay with it. They don't rebuke witchcraft and the crystal balls. Muslims don't do that. They don't care about it. They might say something about it, but they, don't, they ain't doing nothing. Matter of fact, you'll see Muslims with them crystals on their wrists. Hey, Stuart, that was an experience. That was a shock. Muhammad is a false prophet. I love Muhammad. I love all the Muslims. But God hate y'all mocking him. God would not be mocked. So you can say what you want. I love all the Muslims, but I'm not going to be weak. It say be strong in the Lord. It say be strong in the Lord. So we don't bow down to no false gods. He didn't give us the spirit of fear. When y'all Muslims is fasting, what y'all are doing is y'all are making sure y'all protect this pedophile Muhammad by listening to what he told y'all to do. Somebody get convicted of raping a child and then he become a president or a leader. They don't work like that. You can't just be in leadership positions if you got serious crimes and convictions and allegations against your name. That's not righteous. You ain't rightfully holding that position. If it's corruption, you're going to fall. That's going to be your destruction. So let them, God, the powers that be are ordained by God, whether they be wicked, whether they be righteous, whether they believe in God, whether they believe, whether their God is their belly. You still going to submit. You still going to answer to the most high. So do what you want. You, it, it just make it easier to gather up complaints against you and people testify against you. We shake off our dust for a testimony against you. And it'll be worse. It'll be better. It'll be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than that city who don't receive us. When we shake off our dust for our testimony. In the day of judgment, it'll be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for your city. Yeah, when you tell the truth, they say, why are you hating on Muhammad? I never said I hate Muhammad. I love Muhammad. God hates lies. God hate liars. Stop playing with the Messiah. Stop playing with my Messiah. All love. All are welcome to surrender to Christ. Yeah. Some of y'all will be saved by the fire. 
When the word of God says some of y'all be saved by the fire, these are the Muslims. Because they believe in Muhammad so much that they would take someone's life because Muhammad told them that they can steal from people that's unbelievers. Muhammad said they can steal from unbelievers. What type of righteous man to do tell you to steal? Huh? The re look, let me tell you why. The reason why Muhammad told you to steal from unbelievers, because he stole his whole doctrine from the apostles and the prophets. That's why he said y'all can steal from unbelievers. See, y'all don't want to test me. Y'all don't want to test me. Can't nobody tell your imam to come talk to me because I'm going to put y'all to shame. Any Muslim get up in my face talking about Muhammad is greater than Jesus or Jesus was just a prophet. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. Y'all Muslims believe it's okay to marry little children? Do y'all Muslims believe it's okay to marry little children? Because that's what your leader did. That's what your leader did. This man was a pedophile teaching you about God. You sure he was teaching you about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when he was in the pedophilia with Aisha? How can a man teach you about God, but he's going against God's laws and, 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 and commandments? Huh? Muhammad taught y'all how to be child molesters and get away with it. How to have the heart of a pedophile and get away with it and hide behind religion. He used Islam to get away with genocide against the um, human race. That's what he did. Muhammad used genocide to create, Muhammad used Islam to create genocide. That's why he ordered the military people to go kill and do all these wars. Jesus never ordered no military to do nothing and the government was upon his shoulders. All them Jews started believing in him. They was mad, they wanted to kill him. He was a Jew, but he said, son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. He said, oh, I can forgive sins. They said, who can forgive sins but God? So they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him because he said, man the son of man is lord of the sabbath y'all talking about i broke the sabbath because i made a man whole what about when the priests are um profane and blasphemy the temple on the sabbath what about when david went into the temple and ate the shoe bread and gave to those that was with him but wasn't lawful for him to eat but only for the priest Looks like they say he will look like a crucified man. Jesus is coming back in his broken body. Jeremiah 19, Rosebud. Hold on. Any Muslims in here need me to pray for them? If any Muslims in here need me to pray for them, let me know. 453. So you said Jeremiah 1 and 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, God will put his words in your mouth and he will fill you up with his words and his doctrine. So when you want to think on your own understanding, you'll say, no, God said um, women adorn themselves with modesty. When you want to think about leaning on your own understanding or doing whatever you're going to remember what God said to all the Muslims who is Aisha ain't Abi Bakar poor Aisha 
God, thank you for providing me with your word. Please grant me the strength to speak it faithfully and accurately without altering it in any way. Amen. Amen, Rosebud. Yeah, that's why I told y'all, Muslims ain't nothing but modern day Pharisees. They refused the gospel as did the fake Jews and Pharisees. So them Jews back then that was refusing Jesus Christ is the same way how these Muslims refuse the gospel. I'm encountered by your zeal and knowledge of the Holy Scriptures. Go forward, young man. Ben Richardson, all glory be to God. Rosebud said, have a blessed day, everyone. And to expose the lies of the devil. They said Jesus Christ was born so he would destroy the works of the devil. So do what you will is the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under law. No, do what you will is not the uh, whole of the law. The whole of the law is love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, the two great commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In New York City, they put up rainbows just for Easter. Sick people. This is the day Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. Well, the Bible don't tell us the exact day that he rose. But Easter was created by Constantine to replace the Passover. That's what they came together. We talked about in that last stream. They came together and decided to celebrate Christmas instead of Passover. But what they did when they did that was they broke a, a holy commandment, a holy law of God. We was all supposed to celebrate Passover, not Easter. So when they made that change, they broke and changed one of God's laws that should have never been changed. In New York City, they put up rainbows. Rainbows, brothers and sisters. Rainbows. Rainbows. It lets you know the politicians are being ran by homosexuals. Lesbians, you got lesbians up in office, they judges and all that, but they lesbians. So they're gonna take bribes from the LGBT. You got gay judges up in there, they they marrying two men together. So they're gonna take bribes from whoever is the highest bidder. This is where corruption in our government and it's all this destruction. It's wicked. We ain't got nothing righteous in this government. No man righteous, but God. Everybody's wicked. Everybody can be brought for a price. Politicians talking about you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Cardi B with all these, like this is darkness. They not believers of God. They care who gonna vote for them. They don't care who gonna make everything Christ-like, who gonna follow the word of God. They lean on their own understanding. They make laws out of their own wicked heart. They don't make their laws in harmony with God's laws. So it's correct, it's destruction. There's a way that seems right to men, but the ending thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrow. Jenny and Kenny Hagman, God bless you. God is good, God bless you, amen, Barry, Barry Gallagher. Easter Fool's Day. That's a good one. I subscribe, brother. Peace be upon you. I look forward to joining your lessons. You are doing God's work. Make sure you always spell G with a capital, God with a capital G though. Lowercase is false gods. And I pray he elevates you to lead our people to salvation. Amen. Tomorrow is Fool's Day. Grand Garden. He got the Chinese or Arabic writing. Chinese or Arabic writing. I don't know what that says. If anybody can just translate that, what Grand Garden is saying.
Yeah, fools do think they think Jesus Christ was born December 25th, but they can't show you in the scriptures where it say that. If that's true about the the flags hanging up in New York City, the rainbows, if that's true, then it seems like it's a way to disrespect God, just like the LGBT used the rainbow. But we know that the rainbow was first came from God. They took it and used it to be evil and wicked with it. That still don't mean that God used it first. The same way how the word prophet was used in the word of God first. Muhammad took the word prophet and taught you what a false prophet is. That's all. He's the first example where we can learn and study and exhort one another and edify each other on how do false prophets operate? What do they do? I don't think Jesus, I, I never read it in the scriptures that Jesus was born April 1st. Exactly, John Yo. No one knows the date of Jesus' birth. Look. You said King James was gay? King James, good thing King James ain't writing none of these scriptures, right? He only translated the Bible. He didn't put none of his personal feelings in the word of God. So it don't matter if he was gay or not. We don't, we don't study the Bible to learn about King James. We study to learn about Jesus and all the prophets. So, but I get what you're saying. He translated it. He didn't write nothing. It was already written in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. All he did was translate it into English. But I get what you're trying to say. He was gay. The people who you pay your rent to is gay too. Because they didn't fight against gay marriages, so they they going against it. Ain't nobody say nothing out, uh, uh, in public. They, they want to do nothing to change all this gay marriages, homosexuality, lesbians getting married with each other. So the person you pay your rent to, he's gay too, right? Your landlord. Is he trying to get you to fight against homosexuality? So he gay then, right? See, the same with the same measure you meet, it'll be measured unto you again. Every tongue that rise up against the children of God in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the Lord. This is the, this is the servants of the Lord. It's our job. No tongue can rise up against us without being condemned. You said Zechariah 14 and 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to Worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to get that for y'all real quick. Zechariah 14 and 16. It says... And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that so when Muhammad read this, he said, I'm going to do the same thing and corrupt this this scripture from Zechariah 13, um, 14 and verse um. 16 14 and 16 and it say and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king the lord of hosts and to keep the feast of tabernacles muhammad knew all this stuff that every nation had to go up and worship the king keep the feast of tabernacles he said i'm gonna make people worship me and i'm gonna build a rock somewhere in saudi arabia and tell people take their pilgrimage once a year and worship me he corrupted the word of God and we showing and proving. Thank you, brother. I love you for that scripture. Topper, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16, proves further that Muhammad stole this and created the pilgrimage. 
all believers will worship the Lord. It say the king worship the king, the Lord of hosts. Y'all want to know? Y'all want to know why the Euphrates River dried up? Let me give you. Let me give you Bible and show you why the Euphrates River dried up. Go to Zechariah chapter fourteen and verse seventeen. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of Hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. No rain. Excuse me. I'm just, I'll be on fire for God. I'm, I might have to leave here. Because I can't stay in no, I can't be held. The Holy Ghost can't be held in buildings that's made with walls and stuff. We, like, you know how the wind blow. You don't know which way the wind is blowing from. That's how it is. That's everybody that's born in the spirit. We, we, we don't know when it's, it's might just, God just might say, speak out. But I'm going to be respectful. I'm going to be decently and orderly. I'm going to try to go to a, I'm going to go in the car for a little minute so we can, we can speak a little louder. I don't want to cause no disturbance in here. Worship the king. The Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Elizabeth was conceived after the priestly course of Abia, which is in the Hebrew month, Savan, May and June, six months from Elizabeth's conception. And Savan takes us to the Hebrew month, Kiz, excuse me, Kislev. That is when Yahshua, Jesus Christ, was conceived in Miriam's womb, not born, meaning late in December. Some people say they think Jesus was born in October. I was hoping that was October because that's when I was born. Y'all Muslims got to repent. Y'all know that this is not a game. Playing with Jesus Christ and his disciples. All you Muslims should be ready to get baptized. Y'all should be all contacting me for me to pray for y'all. Every Muslim should be sending me an email that watched this video telling me that they want me to pray for them. And they want me to be preaching to them personally about the things they need help with. I'm here to help y'all, Muslims. I love y'all. I want y'all to all become followers of Jesus Christ. Y'all need to be these, because look, if you want the truth, Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So if you become Jesus Christ's disciple, now you have the whole truth and nothing can be, those, if God can, if God can be for you, nothing can be against you because you have the truth and the truth will set you free. This is why so much wars in the Muslim countries right now, because y'all don't have the truth. Muhammad got y'all thinking that this is the way to follow and this is the way how to get to God. You're not going to make it to paradise praying five times a day from a man that stole the name of the prayers. One of y'all names of y'all prayers is Salah. He stole that from the word of God. I got it all written down. Muhammad wanted to be one of Moses' disciples. And he seen Solomon, all them wives Solomon had. Muhammad said, oh, I want to do this. Call myself a prophet. He seen what we seen in Zechariah, how every nation of the earth got to go to Jerusalem once a year and worship the, the king. He said, I want to steal this too. Let me make everybody come to Saudi Arabia and take their pilgrimage and worship me. So he done stole the word of God, corrupted it, and then got y'all Muslims believing that he was the truth and stuff like that. Muhammad was a bold-faced liar. 
I sit right up here and tell y'all all day how, how much lies he created. If it wasn't for no lies, it wouldn't be no Islam. Yes, God is true king. So brother, my man is Catholic and I can't tell him nothing. So true, brother. If you can't tell him nothing, show him the Bible and ask him who was Catholic in the Bible. Was Christ a Catholic? Was Peter Catholic? Was Luke, was Luke or anybody Catholic that you see in the scriptures? He gonna say no. Well then ask him, well, why are you? That should change his heart right there. You never wanna go back and forth with people and say why you think that it, when you're dealing with someone that believe in something, that's a that they believe is God and that believe is gonna get them closer to God, you don't wanna argue and go back and forth with them. You wanna show them God's word and say, can you show me in this word where you, you like the Catholics believe in God. They say they believe in Jesus. They use the Bible. So you got to hit them with what they believe in. If you believe that you're a Catholic, can you show me in the Bible who was a Catholic? Then that opens up a conversation right there. Read Jeremiah chapter 44. That explains how God feels about the queen of heaven. All right, y'all. Follow along, Jeremiah chapter 44. I'll be having trouble finding Jeremiah. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them saying, oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate, but they hearken not nor incline their ear, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn no incense unto other gods. God said, don't burn no incense to other gods. What do you see Muhammad and all y'all doing? Playing with sage and third eye chakras and stuff like that. That's false gods. You got people running around saying they're spiritual, but not religious. You ain't hear about spirituality before, before you heard about religion. The reason how you know about being spiritual is from the word of God. You have the Jews religion. Then you have the religion of the Christians. But what makes it so similar and I like a lot of things are. A lot of things are like the same, basically, because Jesus never came with no new customs or traditions. He destroyed all the customs and traditions that didn't need that, that he's seen that where they aired at. He didn't come and destroy the Passover. They kept the Passover. They didn't call it Passover. I know the word Easter is in the New Testament. They didn't celebrate Easter, brothers and sisters. None of the disciples celebrate Easter. They kept the Passover. I read that to you. I can show y'all. I got it saved. They didn't change like certain customs, how they had to keep certain things. Remember, they said, Jesus said, y'all go up to Jerusalem for this feast. I can't go. Remember? And then he went anyway, right? got Daniel chapter 4 verse 17 let me get on that real quick Daniel 
Daniel chapter 4 verse 17 says this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the best the best of men James was Jesus brother come to come to Islam we are set black white yellow here's the thing nobody want to be around a bunch of lies so why would somebody come to Islam it don't matter what y'all set it's not about people don't care about see this is the thing the Muslims want to make you think that they're righteous or they're doing something good because they let Chinese people, black people, and white people all come into the mosque and pray together. That still don't make it true. Just because y'all accept all different people don't mean that it's the truth. When you go to the chop shop, the people that take people's cars and, and, and change them up and stuff like that, they don't care what you are. They gonna give you the same service. When you go to a pawn shop, they not trying to ask you if you stole this infam uh, this uh items or what. They just gonna take it. They take it from black, white, yellow. It don't matter. So, what are you trying to say? That's how the world is. The world don't bring you the truth that it set you free. When I see one of these mega preachers out there in Africa, the brother John Chi, when I seen this brother John Chi, I have a lot of respect for this brother because I've seen him do a lot of deliverances. Like his church is one of the big mega churches. They got translators. When he's speaking, they got someone translating it in French and, and stuff like that. So John Chi do some miracles And he'll do like deliverances Putting hands on people that got in car act Bad car accidents And their back is like all Like people be traveling to go to see that man From different parts of the world and stuff like that Cause I never seen churches like here in America Do deliverances They don't even talk about deliverances Like for real So I seen this man John Chi He's an apostle matter of fact Not a pastor He's an apostle so I seen John Chi go out to Dubai. It's on his Instagram. And he got a picture where he's wearing Muslim clothes. Ain't no man of God got to do that. If we go in and talk with Muslims or whatever and we go into their country, we don't got to change how we are and how we dress. This dude done put on Muslim clothes and stuff. It made me look at John Chi completely different. I still love him. But once I seen that, that just, it, 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 it troubled my spirit. You get what I'm saying? Because I look at him like a man of God and... I see him preaching and hit and doing miracle signs and wonders through him, God using him. But at the same time, God only using him for a, specific, uh, a particular time and point to do certain things for the time being. But it, it was good to learn a lot and study some things how he, what he did and let me see. These churches over here in America, they not doing deliverance how they doing in Africa. And that was one of the things I did see that it, it it opened my eyes to see how a lot of people are being misled and deceived because what why how come they really doing deliverance like people that's gotten bad car accidents can't walk and stuff they have a deliverance room they got a deliverance room y'all go watch them and check them out but don't believe in a lot of stuff because you can only believe in christ and god i'm I, if you watch them you won't see that you won't feel like I can't see what he's doing wrong he preaching everything out the word and I, I can't find nothing wrong with him but then when you go on his Instagram you see that picture with him wearing them clothes 
and he meeting with a guy out in Dubai and it just didn't look right to me. It looked like you converting to Islam. You don't have to do all that to be accepted by no Muslim. We not wearing no Muslim clothes. I wish I would. Muslims ain't create turbans either. But they do got their own clothes and hats that they wear. And you can tell when it's that, like, you get what I'm saying? It's Muslim clothing. They might have stole some of that clothing from how Jesus dressed, too. They see how the woman dressed in the Bible, and they said, we're going to make our women dress like this. That might be one of the only things that the Muslims have that they took from Jesus Christ that they still keep in this day. That was true. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff they took and, and corrupted it, but that was one of the true things that they stole from. Because Muhammad sat there, he studied Jesus Christ's disciples. He dis he studied the Bible. He studied people that had knowledge of the Bible. He wouldn't have been able to write the Quran if he didn't know the Bible, like the back of his hand. He had to study everything about that Bible. That's why he's, that's why you see, we read the stuff out of Zechariah that he did. That's where he created the pilgrimage from Zechariah. We learn so much, brothers and sisters. That's why I'm so grateful and blessed to have y'all to come through here and just share, edify each other. Because when y'all share them scriptures, it's opening me up to things to show, hey, this is what um, Muhammad did. This is what where it started in Jerusalem. It was a tradition of Hebrew Israelites. So Muhammad took it and changed it. And it just, it's beautiful to know the truth. If you don't know this truth, you'll be in a Freemasonic temple claiming that you got to go make your Hajj every year. This was Malcolm X. He was a Freemason. Martin Luther King, Freemason. Seen it to the mountaintop. But he said, I'm, I might not make it there with you or something, he said. So Muhammad Ali, Mason. Minister Farrakhan, we caught him with the Masonic garb on. I showed it. Caught Farrakhan. Farrakhan had an apron wrapped around his waist. And then when I expose it, people say, see, some of our brothers got to stand up for something. Ain't no stand up for nothing. What y'all talking about? Some of us got to meet with the other side and get things done. Y'all sound like a bunch of foolish people. Thank you for the $10 contribution, dollar sign entertainment, Ishmael is older than Isaac. Muslims worship the same God differently according to their tribe. We follow Isaac. Also, you can't be Judah and Shem Jew and Semite. So, brother said that Ishmael's older than Isaac. Muslims worship the same God differently according to their tribe. We follow Isaac. Also, you can't be Judah and Shem, Jew, and Semite. So, I really, I'm not really too up on the New Old Testament like that as far as the tribes and who came from what um, tribe, like Shem and, and Judah. But I know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were three important people that was in the scriptures but I'm not going to go over my head with that with that response with that comment right there because I really don't I have too much knowledge on that Jet Hussein free Palestine free Palestine free everybody who's dealing with persecution and affliction Every country, every nation, every people, let Jesus come into their life. Let them get revelations of who Christ is, what he will do for them, and let them believe and live, walk by faith, not by sight. Muhammad told y'all to walk by sight. Muhammad probably was strangling people, telling them to believe in Islam. It was forced on people. You know how they try to say, the Christians stole people land and they gave them a Bible. That stuff is a lie. 
Because first of all, stealing is a sin. It's a crime. So ain't no Christian would have been giving nobody no Bible and stealing their land. That's something that the devil taught y'all to move y'all farther away from Christ. A lot of the Freemasons or groups and people don't want people to lean on God's understanding. They want you to lean on your own understanding so they can capitalize off of it and they can exploit all your unbiblical, ungodly thoughts, actions, and deeds. That's why they don't want you leaning on Christ. Because you can't be controlled. You can't be brought and sold. You can't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. They said Satan going to and fro, through, roaming through the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And he can't devour you if you got God's word. Jesus already defeated him. Reggie said, trust me, I feel like I heard it all. All leaders are low lives, but Jesus still has providence over them. Yep. Topper says Psalms um, 12 and verse 6. Psalms 12 and verse 6. Psalms 12 and verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. So the words of the Lord, they are pure words, like furnace, like fire tried in the furnace seven times. The words that we are speaking are pure words. The reason why you can't receive it and you don't want to believe it because Muhammad got y'all deceived. I think it's about time to get into this lesson. Actually, I'm going to answer a few more questions and then we'll get into the lesson. And can I get some comments? And let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think that I should just keep continuing and start the lesson up? Or you think I should end the live stream and come back and start the lesson? Either way, the video is going to be drawn out. It's going to be long because I'm not going to neglect y'all questions and just leave y'all here hanging with questions. I'm a long suffer with y'all. Even if my phone die, I got 20%. I'll be just sitting here suffering to get this message out. Yes. Thank you, Reggie Rogers. All races and ethnicities are welcome for salvation it don't matter about your race your age jesus christ want all people to know who he is and know how much he loves you it don't matter it don't matter if you was worshiping a pedophile like muhammad you can come to jesus christ and he will accept you i know muhammad had y'all deceived, but Jesus Christ loves you. He wants you to live for the truth, which is in his word. Easter Fool's Day. Rabbits don't lay eggs. Tricks ate for kids. Y'all have baby faith. Shine bright light. That's true. It's Easter Fool's Day. They go out and have witch hunts. When they do that um Easter egg hunt, that's a witch hunt, right? Because the God ain't tell y'all to do that. That's rebelliousness. Easter is created by Constantine. Who created the Easter egg hunt? Did Jesus have an Easter egg hunt? So when y'all go out and do that, that's rebelliousness towards God's word and his law. You leaning on your own understanding. Six things the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are abomination to him. A proud look. Don't y'all got to look proud for Easter? A lying tongue. Jesus wasn't born on Easter. Hands that shed innocent blood. Feet that's quick to run the mischief. A false witness that utter out lies. And them who sow discord among brethren. So you a false witness that utter out lies. A lying tongue. Y'all quick to run the mischief, talking about let's go run and get these Easter eggs. That's mischief. Who cares about suits? Why is that a topic? Because nobody told your pastor to wear suits to church. 
We had the word of God before they had suits. Jesus wasn't preaching in no suit. He never taught us to wear suits. So the reason why it's a topic is because they make that look like you have to dress like this. Like Jesus taught that this is how the way they have to dress. Jesus never told them to wear suits. So who told them that? It's either the devil or God. And if God didn't say it in his word, then who said it? The devil. It's simple, brothers and sisters. We ain't got to sit up here and speculate and act like what they doing is not biblical. It's not biblical, brothers and sisters. Nobody told them to wear suits. They just did that because they think they look good. Like the, the world tell you to wear suits and go to funerals and stuff like that. That's worldly. Suits is wearing suits. Preaching, any preacher wearing suits is worldly. That's why they go get haircuts every week. That's worldly, brothers and sisters. Show me one scripture where it said Jesus went to the barber shop and get a shape up, got a line up, and, and got his hair cut every week. Y'all can't show it. That's why I put all them them um preachers that want to look good but hide they sins. I put them to shame. Them suits ain't gonna save you. Ain't no wearing no suit gonna get you into heaven. Y'all could cut that out. I've had very bad experience with churches. Yeah, some churches are not churches of God. Some churches are really doing more than what you ever seen any church doing in, in, in a lot of a lot like that thing what happened in Ohio when that man took the homeless in, like that's what all church is supposed to be doing. But they make it look like you have to be a member of their church for them to help you. And 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 if you believe in God and you have faith, that's when Jesus will help them and heal them. He never said, "You got to be a member or be my disciple." He, he everybody that came to him, he made them whole. He never turned nobody away. It was only one time where he said, "This kind can't come out but by praying and fasting." That was the only time because he had so many unclean spirits in them and he knew they ain't gonna come out all this 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 one time right here he gonna have to pray and fast because this is like maybe years of bad habits that he had to you know get through even a lady that had the issue of blood 12 years when she came to jesus he made her whole he ain't say you gotta be a member of my church he ain't say join the church first he said if they believe they was already members see if they believe, you believe he's God, you're already a member. The lady that worshiped him, the lady that said, it, it's not me. He did turn the one woman down, the Sumerian. He said, it's not me to give what's holy unto dogs. She said, yeah, Lord, but even the dogs take the, the crumbs off the table. And he, he what did he do? Gave her salvation, made her whole, liberated her, freed her. Saved her. Ha ha ha. Jack, why not answer my questions? Why do you kiss the black stone? It's a command by Muhammad. So why do y'all Muslims kiss that black stone? Can any Muslim answer that? Can anybody answer that? This dude in the comment section talking about things that he knows not if you think you know but you can't prove that means you got a heart that derives wicked imaginations because you assuming stuff even if you are right you can't prove it brother keep the comment section respectful brother I see no evidence of any God or God's existence. Jim Davis, look all around you. You seeing God's creation right here. You see them trees? Who you think made them trees right there? God. See that grass over there? Who you think made that grass? God made that. Man ain't make none of that. Jack Hussein, email me, brother. 
I'm 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 willing to see you in person and speak about the Bible. You could call your imam or call whoever you know up. Everything I said shows and proves that Muhammad was a pedophile. He's a false prophet. And I don't know what you're saying you want to see me in person for, but it, 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 email me, brother. We could talk. Hopefully, I bring you closer to Christ. That's all I'm here for. I'm not here to go back and forth or have no contentions with nobody. I'm just standing on the word of God strong. So if it convicts you, I'm. it's not my fault. It's not me. It's God doing the convicting. He just using me as a voice to speak his words because you would never look in his word and understand it. How someone that really loved God and fear him understand it. You only became a Muslim to try to get ahead in life and be around a group of people that can help you. And y'all do a lot of corrupt things together. Some Muslims are all about money so much that they would do things that goes against what Muhammad taught. And I'm calling y'all out. I'm telling every Muslim, Muhammad never told y'all to do the things that y'all doing. When it come to Jesus, he told y'all to believe in Jesus. He said Jesus was a messenger, a prophet of God. But y'all speak so um, blasphemous against Jesus. Do you know Muhammad blasphemy when he said Jesus is just a prophet? Muhammad blasphemy against God when he said that. Shine bright light. How about this? You can email me, brother, and we could talk. My Instagram is always open for people who don't understand the teachings. They need more clarity. They need things explained to them. Or they just think that I don't understand the teachings. You can come on the Instagram and we could talk, brother. That's why I got my email up for people that want to talk personally about anything. You got any any issues with the teachings, we can speak, brother. Well, you're not my brother, but you can be my brother in Christ if you follow Jesus Christ, who is God, and turn from the deception and all the idol worship. So, R R Reggie Rogers said, I hope that the Lord see, sends a loving community your way. And I'm sorry that there were people that claimed to be Christians that may have hurt you or upset you. Yeah. So the people who said that, sister, I'm sorry, too, that I didn't respond back to your comment with a lot of humility. I'm just trying to teach and answer so many comments at the same time. I didn't take as much time as I should. I apologize if any preachers misled you, whether they be Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Pentecostal. The Protestants started all these denominations in the 1600s. They came over here and started the first denomination. Then that's where we get all these other different um, denominations. But I am sorry if you was misled by anybody but God will never mislead you I know I was misled growing up I believed that women could be preachers up until like three years up up until like one year ago I never knew nothing about women not being preachers until I started to hear certain people teaching and then I read the word for myself and then once I read it for myself I knew it I didn't just believe what was taught to me I had to read it for myself and that's how we get misled a lot and we get tricked and lied to because people claim to be church people and religious people, but they in it for the wrong reasons. They in it to better their life and make money off of God's name. They got bills that they're going to need paid. I told you all my conditions in my life. I'm blessed and I'm grateful to have a mom that's there for me. So I don't have a lot responsibilities so I'm able to take as much time as I need to preach and that's beautiful man everybody don't have this um, schedule like they can just put all their time into whatever they want some people gotta work and pay bills so that's why I'm here to help as much as I could with this word because I know a lot of y'all work a lot and you don't got time to study the word as much 
you I pay them bills. I'm just in a position where I don't have my own. I'm still staying with my mom, but I'm able to have a, it's a lot of time on my hands so I can do this freely, not willingly. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this willingly, not of necessity, not because I need something out of it. But it says that, what it say? We will profit, right? This, this, the, the knowledge that we get of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instructions and in righteous. So I'm going to profit. I just don't know how. I might profit with having God sending better people in my life. I might profit by people sending God putting people in my life that know the word just as much as me. So we exhort and edify one another and help teach each other things that we had not too much of a deep understanding on. Oh, good. You're reading what I am word for word. Don't argue with fuels. Lord, I rebuke any spirit in Yahweh's name that is not with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Larry L. May peace be unto you. Good seeing you. Y'all still ain't answering my question. Do y'all think I should just go right into the teaching? Or do y'all think I should end this live stream video and then get into the teaching? Let me know what y'all think. I'm about to go up in these Wendy's. I'm not trying to spend too much. I'll probably buy a cookie from in there and then just stay in there and do my thing. Okay. In Jeremiah chapter 44, he starts talking about the queen of heaven. Muhammad came out and started talking about the queen of heaven. We read Jeremiah 44 already. So in Jeremiah 44, chapter 19. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? So that was the idolatry of Judah. When they did all this stuff, it was idolatry because they wasn't supposed to burn no incense to no queen of nothing and she wasn't no queen of heaven. And they made her an idol. This is what idolatry is. They were supposed to burn out drink offerings unto God. Listen, it says, but we will certainly do. Go to Jeremiah 44 and 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, out of our own mouth, not out of God's mouth. Listen, for we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem for then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. They got consumed by the sword and by the famine for doing these things. See, the Lord God don't like idolatry. So, it says, and when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? So this was evil right here, what they did. 
And this lets you know they've been consumed with the sword, by the sword, and by the famine. Since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven. So it wasn't righteous back then, and it still ain't righteous to do it now. So when Muhammad seen that, he knew that them dudes got famine and got the sword put on them. They were cursed. That was a curse doing that. So he put it in the Quran, Mary is the queen of heaven. If Muhammad ain't the best liar in the world, then I don't know who is. He was the one of the most best liars. He made millions of people follow him and join Islam when he created them lies. And started telling y'all this stuff. Mary is the queen of heaven. He put the word apostle in the Quran. Call himself a prophet. I want y'all to realize. He said, Muhammad said, Muslims can steal from unbelievers. He said, Muslims could steal from unbelievers. My phone on 14%, brothers and sisters. This is like hard work, y'all. Trust me. This ain't easy. With this phone, I wish I had a camera and I could just record these videos and just upload them when I'm done. I keep a camera in my in my dashboard and just record all day and upload them when I'm done. I want y'all to realize. It's never been about religion. I won't agree exactly with that, brother. When you when you mean religion, what do you mean? If you mean tithes and offerings, going to church only on Sunday, wearing suits to church, if you mean it's not about that, I agree with you. But the word of God tells us if a man the, if, if the pure religion and undefiled before God is checking on the fatherless and the widows and keeping itself unspotted and blameless from the world. And then it tells us about how if a man see someone have need and he shut up his doors, what kind of religion is that? It tells you certain things that if you do certain things, your religion is in vain. So when you look at religion, it doesn't tell you to do worldly traditional stuff of men. But it does tell you what, how to walk, what you're supposed to purpose in life, what you're supposed to do, how to do charity. Who do we do charity to? We don't look down on certain people when it tells us the fatherless and the widows. Now, some people feel like they don't want to just help any homeless person, but they'll help a believer. You got to know the scriptures to see and know, were they just helping anybody? When they did charity, did they just give it to anybody or was it believers? You have to know these things because you'll be just giving away money to every homeless person think you're doing charity. It was believers. Trust me, it was believers. You ain't supposed to just give money away to no homeless person. When they said they sold all their possessions and laid them at the apostles' feet, distribution was made according to every man as he had need. They were all believers. If they sold all their possessions and laid them at the apostles' feet, they were believers. And distribution was made according to every man as he had needs. See, as the body of Christ and as the church, these things was written in the law in the book of Acts. So it tells us how we supposed to conduct ourselves and how we supposed to operate. But if you listening to a preacher instead of God, if Jesus Christ ain't your first preacher and then your church preacher is your second preacher, then you might be in bad shape. Jesus Christ always supposed to be your first preacher. He's our all. He's everybody's pastor.
That's why I just call him Jesus because it's the English translation of the Hebrew name Yeshua. Yeah. And he never said when when they speak in new tongues, he never said to go back and tell people what his name was in Hebrew. Matter of fact, but this is what it say in the word of God. It say if I speak in tongues to somebody who don't understand me, I will be like a barbarian to him. And he will be like, you get what I'm saying? I will be like a heathen to him. He don't understand what I'm saying. So why is y'all talking in all this Hebrew and we speak English? We got English Bibles, brother. It tells us when he said Hebrew, it said, Lama, Lama, shot to That mean, my God, why have you forsaken me? His name was interpreted. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. They say Cephas, which means a stone. You get what I'm saying? They tell us the Hebrew words. Why we got to do more translating than the Bible already do? It's enough Hebrew in the Bible to me, brothers and sisters. If I wanted to learn Hebrew, I would have went to a college and took a semester to go to seminary school and teach y'all like the Hebrew Israelites. Let me teach you about your nationality, all that stuff they teaching. Who taught them that? They didn't learn that from the Bible. Moses or none of Moses' disciples taught like that. They knew they was Hebrew Israelites. Why would they go out and have to teach people about their nationality? That just sounds weird to me. Jesus is God in the flesh. Yep. Job tried to understand God's nature and ways too. He said Job was perfect before the Lord. I'm glad you brought up Job because it, it, it lets me be able to reflect back on Job and, and read on that. The first chapter and ver verse, first chapter and verse in Job, God said he was perfect. Watch this. Y'all say y'all can't be perfect. There's no one perfect but God. Y'all say it's no one perfect but God, right? I'm about to prove y'all wrong. Watch this. Let's go into Job chapter one. There was a man in a land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect. No, only God is perfect. And that man was perfect and upright. We all make mistakes and fall short of the glory of God. We we all need mercy and grace. You know, only God is perfect. Don't. There's only one that's good and that's God. Why would it say be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect if we can't be perfect? Perfect meaning perfect knowledge between good and evil. Watch this. It say there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So he and there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So it says Job was perfect. Y'all talk about how he got drunk and all that stuff. Did God say that um, he ain't going to use Job after that? Nope, he still used them. So when y'all look into these scriptures, you got to really know what it mean and see how beautiful this word is. The same way God used Moses to write the Ten Commandments after he smote the Egyptian. Let you tell it. Happy Fool's Day. Aquila. If that's how you feel, see you later. An addict for the Lord, yeah. That's what I am. No, it was made up to watch the body didn't happen. Read each gospel, it's a different story all around to who showed up first to the site, to what they saw. A. Sean Brian Light. You come back tomorrow. Hopefully you got a better heart, brother. Are you in New York? Yeah. Would, let me see you make a video before you come tell me what to do. Go up in the preacher and tell them Stop going to church only on Sunday and stop taking tithes and offerings because that's in the law. Until you keep all the law, why you got your bear shave and all this stuff? You show me where in the commandments where it say, don't do what you telling me not to do. You can't, you can't see it. It's not in the two great commandments. It's not in the 10 commandments. So don't come over here like you in a religious church trying to tell me how I'm supposed to preach. That's the devil in you. Till you preach for 24 hours, then have a conversation with me, brother. Other than that, I'm here to help you and save you and bring you closer to Christ. 
Other than that, I ain't going back and forth with you. The Gospels explain differently because they're all because they're all explained the story from their own perspective. That should be obvious, my friend. Jesus died for your sins, God in human form. God didn't have to die for you because he sent Jesus to do it for you. So you need to be aware. Who is your savior? Jesus is God. Hey, Christo, when you read the Bible, you're going to see that people worship Jesus before he was even born. Before he was born, they said, man, we've been searching for this child. We came to worship him. They start, they, the wise men, they followed the star and all that stuff. Nobody told them they was committing idolatry. When Jesus was born and they brought him gifts and incense and frankincense and, and, and stuff, they never said they was committing idolatry. So you can't prove that with the word of God that Jesus isn't God. Every teaching you try to, every scripture that you think you know something about, that you try to prove that Jesus is God, I'm going to read more of that scripture and show you why you don't know what that scripture means and show you how Jesus Christ is God. They got a lot of professors that try to come up here and Muslim rabbi, I mean, Muslim imams, a lot of Jewish rabbis try to come up here and keep us stuck in the Old Testament. But we always use the, the Holy Spirit in the name of Christ to show and prove that he's Christ is the most powerful name. We're not going to stay stuck in something that's a vanished house. It's vanished away. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. Jesus admits he still has a God. You're wrong. Okay, let's see. Revelation 3 and 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So when he keeps saying my God, you know what he's talking about, right? The spirit of God, that is him. That was there in Genesis. When it says in Genesis chapter one, verse one, it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That God that created the heaven and the earth in the beginning is the spirit. God is a spirit and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So that same God, the spirit was Jesus Christ. He didn't have a name yet. Remember in Isaiah, they said, us, uh, unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And his name shall be called the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So his name shall be called the everlasting father, the mighty God. There's only one God. There's only one name for God. Capital G-O-D, the same way it's spelled in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Jesus said, I and my father are one. So when he when you know these things, you won't say, oh, no, that don't mean what it mean. You can't say show that it mean nothing different before Abraham was. I am. I'm the alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords. David, David called him Lord. You can't say these things don't mean what they say. So you are in a hard predicament to try to prove that he's not God. You are in a bed like it's like you uh, uh you tried to climb up a mountain and a whole earthquake just came and the mountain fell on top of you and you are like hurt real bad and you're gonna try to fight and get up out of that you the the rock peter jesus said thou art peter 
And upon that rock, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell will, per not, will not prevail against it. When you tell lies, that comes straight from the pits of hell. So you can't come up against the truth. Everything you do is going to put you to shame and people going to see you getting embarrassed. You can't come over here talking about Muhammad. You can't come over here talking about nothing else that's going to steer people away from Jesus Christ. Because my faith is too strong. My faith is too strong. Go on Wendy's and turn it upside down. Hopefully they don't kick me out. I'm not trying to go in here and be unintentionally loud. I just want to speak the word of God and get these scriptures out and have my phone charging. But when I speak, I get bold sometimes because we're dealing with warfare. We're dealing with people's souls on the line. People telling you God not good and then they're going to go turn around and steal from somebody and commit adultery while they're telling you God is not good and don't believe in God. But they want to commit adultery with your wife while they're telling you that. So this is what we have to battle against. So I think it's a little better in here with the music. Their music is like kind of calm. Hey, what's going on, bro? All right. Can I have you? Okay. I think it's still breakfast too. Yeah. I got to charge my phone. I only got 8%, y'all. This is crazy. Hopefully I get this lesson done because sometimes when it get low, it don't charge for some reason. Like it'll keep going lower and I'll have it on the charger. I got to look into one of them personal chargers. Yeah, but Muhammad wasn't teaching no truth, y'all. Y'all know that. When their Messiah has not yet came and is going to rule the world for seven years, who else is going to rule the world? Yeah. Nobody else. I'm trying to see if I can find a better place. I think it's going to have to be right here. seem like they just turn the music up. Hebrews 1 and 8 isn't the truth. It's based on Psalm 45, which does not say unto the Son, he saith it's a lie. Let me see. Yeah, I'm trying to save all of these Muslims from the false prophets because all they know is the Muhammad and, the Bi and, and they don't know nothing about the Bible. Muhammad stole from the Bible. The Quran came after the Bible. Ain't nobody going to sit up here and let Muslims bully you into believing that their God is real. No, y'all worship a false God, a pedophile taught y'all how to pray. Listen, let, I, I want y'all to hear me real clear. I want y'all to hear me real clear. Every Muslim in this generation that's living, share this video with at least five Muslims right now, y'all, or five to 20 Muslims. Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad was not a true prophet, but Prophet, the dude that called himself a prophet, Muhammad, that wrote the Quran from Islam, is a false prophet. When he was teaching all the Muslims how to pray, still to this day, back then and still today, he was a pedophile. So if you, Muhammad taught you how to pray and you're celebrating Ramadan and you're doing five prayers a day, right? A pedophile taught you how to pray. You better leave Islam if you want to make it into heaven, y'all want talk about paradise, right? Muhammad is not the way, the truth, and the life. The only name under heaven, on earth, that men can be saved by is Jesus Christ. So you have to turn from your wicked ways. I know it might hurt. You might want to cry, but you got to accept the truth and it will set you free. Muhammad didn't bring y'all nothing but a lot of sorrows and deception. So I want every Muslim to know this that when Muhammad created Ramadan, he went against Jesus Christ's prophecy. 
He say he believed that Jesus Christ is a prophet, but he told y'all to go out and celebrate Ramadan. That's not what real prophets do. They don't go against each other's prophecies. When Moses said, thou shalt not commit adultery, Jesus said the same thing. Thou shalt not kill, Jesus said the same thing. Jesus ain't go against none of Moses' prophecies. He fulfilled them. He brought people out of the law of the curse of that Old Testament law that was written on stones, and he brought them into the law of Christ, which was written in our hearts. We are law unto ourselves. We are our own high priests. Ain't no more going to no Catholic priest doing no sacrifice for no sins. If you read Hebrews, you'll learn that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he became the high priest. And now all of his followers are their own priests. And he's a high priest. So that's what we went through yesterday on that stream. Yeah, Larry L. It even says the Bible is true in the Quran. And if the Bible is true, then the Quran is not. That's just simple teachings. It says that the Bible is true in the Quran. And if the Bible is true, then the Quran is not. So Muslims don't know God. They never seen God. They worship a false God and idol gods. It's idol worship. You could just call it devil worship if you want, because it's not a real God. So who is it? You get what I'm saying? It's demonic devil worship. My phone on seven percent, y'all. Jenny and Kenny Hagman says, I'm an addict. What that have to do with knowing and speaking God's truth? Yeah. This is about truth and lies, darkness and light. So you can have an addict and he can have many unclean spirits in him and he can go steal from people. Sorry, 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 sorry. So you can have an addict with an unclean spirit. I'm not saying that I'm an addict, but I'm just answering this person's question. I'm an addict for Jesus Christ. But you can have an addict that'll go steal from people, rob, lie, to get what he wants so he can fulfill his addiction. Then you can have an addict that knows lying is wrong, stealing is wrong. So he's preaching against all of this stuff. He don't even feel right doing the things that he's addicted to that's the one who god will work through and use to put many people through shame people who's high-minded think they know it all think they better than people he will use them to bring them put them to shame and have put the fear of god in their heart god don't use the high rich people and who you think know all the knowledge he used the ones who get despised who get picked on the most that's who he used to lift up and show his power remember Moses and them was in slavery to Pharaoh. He freed them. He freed the Hebrew Israelites from the Egyptians. Them Egyptians still worshiping false gods and crystals and doing sacrifices to this day. Praying to mummies and dead people. Necromancing and stuff like that. That's not of God, but it's of the devil. You praying with dead spirits. Hold on, y'all. Let me go order something real quick. I'll be right back.
Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm ordering food and I'm trying to do a lot right now. I should have tried to do this at a better time. This threw me off with my phone not really being charged today. I had it on the charge all night and it still didn't hold a charge. Christy Craig, amen. Peace be upon you. Yeah, they, the need to lie and the habit of lying are pronounced in those who seek their own selfish interests instead of godliness. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 32. Oh, thank you, man. All right, have a good one. So, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 32, it talks about the need to lie and stuff like that, so... Open it up, see what we gonna do. Proverbs. Chapter three, verse 32. For the full word is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. See, the forward is abomination to the Lord. So it's either you call Christ God do those verses or you can claim as King Hezekiah which makes it blasphemy do what verses read the beginning of Revelation chapter 1 who gave Jesus Christ the revelation did it say he gave it to himself please read it at a night Yeah, Muhammad is an antichrist. Yeah, Muhammad definitely an antichrist. Yeah, Muhammad definitely the antichrist, y'all. A unique perspective says that's a nasty spirit too that kundalini yeah they have you channeling in all different type of unclean spirits that's not of god you don't even know what spirit is coming in you channeling in that's like playing on ouija boards and stuff like that that stuff is wicked them crystals and all that the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. He got missile TV. I think that's like Arabic writing or Chinese. It could be um, Muslim writing or Chinese. Does anybody? Does anybody know what Mizzo TV is saying? So how is King Hezekiah a king who will have an everlasting kingdom when he's dead? Thank you, Larry L. I appreciate that, Larry L. Yeah, 
Yeah, the only way to know God is through Jesus. Any other way is false. How about we say it like this, Jenny? The only way to know God is through Jesus. Any other way, it might be true, but it'll bring you to a false God. We're not going to just say that it, the Buddhism stuff ain't true, but it don't bring you to the same God as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who created everything in this world. Don't bring you to that God. That's all. And we know that by reading the word. It, it tells us about what idolatry is. He's the only God we should worship. So if he's the only God we should worship and his commandments don't change, who is Muhammad to come and start changing things? That's not the same God that he claimed he got the revelations from. See, first Muhammad got that knowledge from a Catholic monk. Then he was in a cave. He thought Satan came and talked to him. He, he was right when he said Satan came and talked to him in that cave. I think Muhammad was deceived the second time when he said that an angel of the Lord or a messenger from God came and talked to him the second time in the cave. I don't think he, he would. I think that was the same Satan that came the first time. That's where he started doing all this stuff that's not biblical. Nobody told Muhammad to go out and create Ramadan. God ain't telling him to do that. That's like saying, man, I'm going to change the Sabbath. Jesus ain't changed the Sabbath. He fulfilled the Sabbath. Who's that? One Ron Tech at official said if you give you a shout out, you're a sub. How about you just share this video with five of your friends? Tell them how good Jesus Christ is. And watch my playlist. They'll give you a lot of information and knowledge and wisdom of God. And it'll make you have more respect and appreciation for who Jesus Christ is and what he stood for in his life. And it, I guarantee you, it'll make you, inspire you, and encourage you to have a stronger and closer relationship with Jesus Christ, who is God. Allah didn't tell Muhammad he was a prophet. Muhammad told himself he was a prophet. And, and God, Allah, whoever y'all think God is, proved that he's not a prophet. Because when we line up, his life with Jesus' life, ain't no prophet ever going to do anything with a girl that's underage. You ain't see that nowhere in the scriptures. You seen men getting their throats cut off and getting their whole city took over from going up and defiling Dinah. Remember when they defiled Dinah? What the brothers do, y'all? They ran and took all their sheep, all their oxen. They slew all the people in their city and everything. Not saying that that's right. We don't war against flesh and blood. That's Old Testament. That ain't Jesus Christ's disciples ain't do that. That was Moses' disciples. But still, we see that. No, that was before Moses. Wasn't that Abraham's son? Abraham's Joseph? So, Muhammad defiled Aisha temple the same way that we read in the word of God in Genesis chapter 42, I think, where Dinah, let's, let's get there real quick, hold on. So when Muhammad did this, this same treatment, he lucky that we under the law of Christ, because if we were still under the laws of Moses, Muhammad would have got the same treatment that these brothers did and when they went to get revenge. First they defiled Dinah. You go read it in Genesis chapter 34, brothers and sisters. Go read it. Muhammad would have got the same treatment for dealing with Aisha. If we were still under eye for eye, tooth for tooth, 
according to the laws of God, Muhammad would have been stoned to death. But because we got grace and mercy and we saved by, we are not under the law, but we saved by grace. He was able to continue to commit them evil, wicked acts that he did after. He, he not only did do that with Aisha, he got multiple wives after that. Committed adultery. He wasn't born of no royal priesthood or no family. He wasn't Aaron and the Leviticus priest. He not from Jerusalem. He wasn't supposed to be doing none of that stuff. According to God's laws, he wasn't told to be fruitful and multiply. The world wasn't just being created when Muhammad was born. We already had all this stuff um, in order. So he came and sowed discord and caused division. Look, it says, Dinah defiled and Dinah, the daughter of Leah, was she bear unto Jacob? Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? So this is important. Went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shishem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. So he defiled her. She didn't want to lay with him. He laid with her without her permission. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the damsel. And he spake kindly unto the damsel. And, Sh and Shishem spake unto his father Hamor, saying, Get me then, give me this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dana, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. And Hamor, the father of Shishem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved. And they were very wroth because he had wrought folly in Israel and lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shishem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give her me, I pray you give her him to wife, and make ye marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you, and ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get you possessions therein. And Shisham said unto her father and unto her brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye shall say unto me I will give. Ask me never so much dowry and gift. Alright, let's get to this. You go into they told him that they had to be circumcised and all this stuff, and then They said, the brothers got revenge. Genesis chapter 34 and verse 25. This would have happened to Muhammad if we were still under the law of Moses, 10 commandments, I for I, two for two. And it came to pass on the third day. When they were sore, Aisha didn't confirm to be with Muhammad. She was too young. She wasn't a woman. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore that two of the sons of Jacob, Simon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shisham, his son, with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shisham's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city. See, every Muslim country would have been spoiled if y'all still wanted to keep these if we were still in the law of Jacob, this is why y'all have to have honor and respect for Jesus Christ. Because Muhammad was able to break these laws and do things that goes against God's law and still not get slain or stoned to death and stuff. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. Y'all don't think that was somebody's daughter that Muhammad, Aisha was somebody's daughter. She had a father. She had brothers and sisters, probably. She had a mother. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which was in the city and that which was in the field and all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives took they captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. And Jacob said to Simon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. 
and I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, Should he deal with our sister as with an harlot? And they said, Should he deal with our sister as with an harlot? So they didn't care how many men was going to come up against him. They were standing for their sister and what was righteous and what was not righteous. They defiled her. So if any man defile, you can be under the laws. You can be put to death under some of these Leviticus laws. That's why this was serious even before the Leviticus. This is in Genesis. It makes you respect more and understand why Leviticus had them laws that certain things, if you defile your head or if the priests do certain stuff, they can be put to death. That's why Caiaphas, when he did that stuff, he was supposed to be put to death when he ripped his clothes. What we read about yesterday, when he ripped his clothes, when they crucified Jesus on the cross. Dollar Sign Entertainment, thank you for the $10 contribution, brother. You got Acts chapter 14, verse 8 through 4. Hold on. So, Acts chapter 18. I'm there now. It says, Paul, Mark, and Barnabas, Judas, cured a cripple. The Gentiles, pagans, began to worship Paul and Judas, and they schemes to make these people Christians. Acts 14 and 27 and Acts 15, 1 and 2. Alright, so we'll start at Acts 14 and we'll go to verse 8 through 14. I'm trying to eat this sandwich before it get cold too, y'all. I just ate the half of the fries. Hold on. All right. Follow along with us, y'all. Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 14. And there came a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. So this man from Lystra, he was impotent in his feet. He was crippled from his mother's womb. So he never walked. He was born crippled, y'all. It says, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. So they wanted to make these brothers planets and worship them. They called Paul Jupiter, brothers and sisters. I mean, they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius. Mercury's, right? Because he was the chief speaker. Then the priests of Jupiter which was before their city brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifices with the people which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying sirs why do ye these things we also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. And all things that are therein. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. And that he did good and gave us rain from heaven in, full, in fruitful seasons. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people. And they had not done sacrifice unto them. So that was Acts chapter 8. And I read through 18. Now he says, 
then they schemes to make these people Christians. Acts chapter 14, verse 27. Acts chapter 14, verse 27 says, I'm going to start at verse 21 and then read up to 27. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must do much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed and with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphly Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Persia, they went down to Atalia, and thence sailed to Antioch. From thence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they would come and had gathered a church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. So, so, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. The door of faith unto the Gentiles. So it's no more bloodline, um, no more of the will of flesh. It's faith. And um, this is why Jesus always healed people when he seen they had faith. When the disciples was on the boat and they said, Oh, save us, Master, we perish. He said, How long will I be with you, ye of little faith? He said, Because of your faith, you become made whole. I haven't seen this much faith in Israel. When the woman said, But Master, even the dogs eat the um, crumbs off the um, table. He said, Your faith made you whole. They said, Abraham, faith was accounted to him for righteousness. So, they had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. That's that's a strong lesson right there. So Acts chapter 15, verse 1 through 2 says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. See? They was telling them that they can't be saved unless they be circumcised after the manner of Moses. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they would come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that, God, how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon Hafe declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. 
that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from, the, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hate in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. So, thank you for them beautiful scriptures, brother. I just wanted to go in a little bit deeper and just read a little bit so people can have more understanding of that. You have to break it down like this, who wrote the Quran and how. Yeah. The only reason, the only reason why Muhammad was able to write the Quran, because he was given the grace and mercy of God to lie, and and still God to keep being graceful and mercy to him. He even wrote it in his Quran to show God wanted to use him to show how darkness worked. God gave Muhammad so much grace and mercy. He became so prideful like Satan was when he was in heaven. When Lucifer said, I want to exalt my stars higher than the stars of God. And he got cast out of heaven. So that's the same thing Muhammad did when he said, wow, I got all this grace and mercy from God. I'm going to put it in my Quran that Muslims can steal from unbelievers. That goes against God's commandments. God did not send Muhammad. If he's going against the commandments, from the Ten Commandments to the two great commandments, if you love your neighbor, you ain't going to steal from them. So if your neighbor is an unbeliever and you're a Muslim, you can steal from them. That's a devil. That's a doctrine of devils. Said in the last days, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, commanding to abstain from meats. That's what Elijah Muhammad told the nation of Islam. Don't eat no meats. Everybody eat these bean pies. Yeah. There's no other book like the Bible. Hey, Mizzo TV. That wasn't the same angel Gabriel that talked to Muhammad that we seen that was in the um, scriptures when it was talking in the New Testament. Muhammad seen that it was power and that Gabriel was moving through the apostles and they was moving with the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to do the same thing. Let me write this in my Quran. I got this revelation from the, look, Muhammad read Luke brothers and sisters. And he's seen how an angel foretold Jesus' birth in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hell, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, young, uh, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation it should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast favor with God, for thou hast found favor with God. 
And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So, Muhammad seen all that power in that scripture right there. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Muhammad said, I'm going to say that an Abel, Gabriel, archangel, came and talked to me while I was in a cave. But he already messed up because he told he, a liar can never get out of the lies that he tell. First, he said Satan came to him in a cave. So how you say go from Satan coming to talk to you, then an angel came and talked to you and told you to do all this stuff that go against God's word. But you thinking that's an angel of God told you to prophesy and create Ramadan and go against Jesus, teaching people how to fast and stuff like that. Jesus said to do it in secret. Who told you to declare to the whole world? What prophecy of God will make you go against the savior of the world? You get what I'm saying? And you say you believe in him? He confessed with his mouth that he believed him, but his heart is far removed from him. That's why I'm trying to help y'all because Jesus Christ loves y'all. I love y'all Muslims and I don't want none of y'all to perish. I used to be a Muslim believing in the false prophet that claimed he got his, all his authority from Muhammad. Why, if, if Muhammad was so righteous, why do Muslims feel like they need to carry guns? They don't see nothing wrong with carrying guns. Why did Muhammad say you can start a jihad and go to war with certain people? If they say Muhammad is not a prophet, y'all can go to war and kill people? Muhammad that wrote the Quran is a false prophet. Y'all can prove me wrong. If y'all can't, y'all kill me. I'm going to be famous just like Jesus Christ's disciples. It don't matter what y'all do. I'm going to live forever regardless. Y'all can't do nothing to me and I don't fear none of y'all. Y'all are weak and y'all ain't got the truth. Every Muslim, a pedophile taught you how to pray. It's a casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Muhammad tried to exalt himself against the God, uh, against the knowledge of my master. You scared to face us, bro. Get your email and tell them let's let's talk live and have this discussion. Ain't nobody scared to face y'all. I'm I already faced y'all. Y'all scared to prove what I'm saying wrong. Rosebud. Why we got only 90 people in here and only 10 likes? Can we get the likes up, please? I'm giving y'all nothing but the word of God, not my own understanding. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life in atonement for sin and opened the life gate that we all may go in. Amen. Yeah. Whether Jew nor Greek, barbarian or Scythian, circumcision or uncircumcision, all are one in Christ. That's why the Muslims came in the chat and said, we are set brown, yellow, and white. Man, you took that from whether Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, you're all one in Christ Jesus. They always take Jesus Christ's teachings and try to twist them and make it look like Muhammad taught that or this is how they um, are open to all. If y'all was open to all, then how come, if I wanted to learn about Muhammad, but I came in with my heart knowing that Muhammad is a false prophet, y'all wouldn't accept that. 
Y'all would say, I gotta believe in what y'all teaching. That's why I'm challenging y'all. I don't, I don't believe none of y'all know the truth. I don't think no Muslim living on in this generation ever seen God or knew God. I don't care who you is. Everything that you heard about God is an altar version. It's like a person going to the movie theater, putting on 3D glasses and saying they can see clear. What's your problem with minor marriage? It's lawful in the Bible, in, in your Bible. You don't see no minor marriages in the Bible. That's a lie, straight from the pits of hell, brother. Show me that scripture. You might see people getting married with um, multiple wives, but that was adultery still. But you ain't seeing no minor marriages in the Bible. Christo, go to Proverbs 30 and four. Why does God have a son? I'm gonna go there with you right now, hold on. Who hate ascended up into heaven or descended who hate glorified the wind and his fist who hate bound the waters in a garment, who hate established all the ends of the earth. What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So it does say that he has a son's name. God have a son. But God's son is also a father. He's God. God's son is God. The only begotten son of God. Who is he? Jesus Christ. Show me where in the Bible do it say it's going to be a prophet named Muhammad that's going to come. I'll show you where in the Old Testament. They didn't even write the New Testament when the Old Testament was written. This is how we know this is truth in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 it say his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God no his name gonna be called small case God he's a separate God from Genesis who created the heavens and the earth that's what that's what his name gonna be it don't say that brothers and sisters it say his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father everlasting mean it never going in First John chapter four and seven. It said first John. Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. His only begotten Son. So God got a Son. Here in his love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation excuse me for our sins beloved if God so loved us we ought also to love one another no man hate seeing God at any time if we love one another God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us
hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he had given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hate to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hate torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who love, loveth God love his brother also. Who from the bat who from the FBI want to get baptized? I don't know if y'all trolling with this account or what, but if y'all watching and y'all must see something y'all like, y'all want to get baptized or something like that. Yeah. You said I'm no e man and I'll prove you wrong. Alright, email me. We'll talk. Sunflower. I don't celebrate the Easter holiday, but you can have a good day today. I'm about to get something to drink, y'all. I love this channel. All Muslim are deceived by the devil. Thank you, uh, Mike Buckley. I'm glad you find edification in this channel and it brings joy to you. Hold on, I'll be right back. It's 11. I'm going to go back out to the car for a second. And charge up this phone before it die on me. Might have to come back later if your phone died. Cause it's only 5% on here. I plan on going back in there. Cause if my phone died, I'm going back in there and charge it up. I'm not gonna keep running this car, trying to charge this phone. Staying right here. Finish this, this live off. Phone die, I would go right back in there. And I can charge it real quick. They can't tell me to leave or nothing because I've been here and I spent some cash here. So look, Muhammad ain't no man of God. Muhammad was deceived by the devil. He thought he was getting revelations from God in that cave. That was not the father. That was not the father talking to Muhammad in that cave. Muhammad was deceived, brothers and sisters. That was the devil telling him that.
God bless you for spreading the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When I'm out here, sometimes I go to the military base, right? Because it's right outside the military base. So I'll be having my music, playing music about Jesus and stuff. So even playing like Christian rap music, sometimes if it's they saying the right words, that's passing the word. It's leading people to Christ. So I'll be, I, oh, I wasn't supposed to show y'all all this, but it don't really matter. I don't care if y'all get my name, but I just don't be like putting all this information out there like that. But I go on to the military base and do my deliveries. Sometime I get some good orders going down there, but I haven't been working a lot at all. At all. And that's a beautiful thing. I'm losing a lot, but I'm getting a lot of peace. So it's a good trade off. I'm struggling with my bills, but I got peace in my spirit and my heart. Like, I'd rather have to not deal with life being on the line every day and just crazy people this world is dark people don't use common sense like that no more at least where i'm at i guess i'm in the same area and i keep seeing the same people and this is they conspiring together to keep doing the same thing so i gotta move around more i used to go out to connecticut and work a lot i haven't been out there in a minute perspective I ain't even get into the message yet I was trying to ask y'all what y'all think should I start the stream right now or should I end this live and come back and start the teaching <laughs> a knight of the king said I like how he's publicly I like how he's casually exposing Islam in a public restaurant yeah two public restaurants I was at Panera Bread in Newburgh New York now I'm at Wendy's on 300 right near the casino at the mall Newburgh New York just exposed Muhammad and Islam so if anybody, there wasn't nobody in there. It's not like I'm looking for people to, 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 to go against me. But people can hear and hear the truth and be edified. And you'd be surprised how word spread. When I was in Panera Bear, there was a lot of people in there. It was a few more people than, than that was in here. And I could have stayed in there. Wasn't nobody going to do nothing to bother me. I'm just warning y'all, this phone go dead, I'm going to have to start over. Celestial body, Jamaican, Jamaica. There's 128 people in here, but 17 likes. I come in my father's name. Amen. I left and came back to Jesus. I've learned that he's really the way I asked God to direct me. And here I am today, back where I started with Christ. Amen. Divine beauty. That's a blessing. I'm glad you walk in this straight and narrow path. Celestial body, no, I'm not Jamaican. But none of that stuff matter. Knight Hezekiah means mighty God. Isaiah means salvation of the Lord. Ezekiel means strength of God. See, I, I'm not sure about that. I 
I feel kind of what Knight is saying. He says, so that gives you the right to call Hezekiah everlasting father, which is the exclusive title of God. Blasphemy. Exactly, God speaks in all languages. Kyle Hoagie. Amen. Happy Easter, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The devil is a lie. Good day, brother. Have a all is well. Have a wonderful day. Marvelous day. I don't celebrate Easter, brother. But be happy every day. Have fun with your family. Lead them to Christ. Yeah, lead them to Christ. Have fun with your family. But what I do on these days, I just worship God every day. This is one of the days where they, they created this Easter for the children to go out and do Easter egg hunts and stuff like that. So it's a day where they try to make it a day where they teach people about Jesus. But we know that Jesus never had Easter egg hunts. And they say it's representing like his resurrection or something like that, but Easter started becoming a different doctrine, that's all. You know what I'm saying? That's all. So I don't know about this teaching y'all's 5% on this phone. It looks like we're not holding no charge. Let me see. I don't need to read the Quran. Why would I read the Quran and Muhammad put Jesus' name in the Quran? Candace Foster, I'm telling the truth, bringing it for real, because they, the Muslims have been comfortable in their lives for too long. Muhammad got y'all believing that y'all really worshiping God. I came to wake up the world and turn the world upside down with the word of God and let y'all know when y'all up in the mosque and you praying on them rugs and stuff like that, ain't nothing about that spiritual. It ain't getting you closer to God. Muhammad was in, in a, a, a lustful, adulterous, inappropriate relationship when he created Islam. So everything that he created, it's like how the jail dude say in the hood. If you do certain stuff, everything that if you tell on somebody, they say no snitching. They say if you tell on somebody, everything that you did in your life, they forget it. Well, that's the same way it is with Muhammad. When he went against God's law, he was no longer a prophet of God. You can't teach people if you're not living the same way how you trying to teach people. You have to walk the same way. This is why y'all can have more than one wife, right? That's not adultery. Come on. People become Muslims because 
they got the they got divorced from their wife and they think that it's okay with God because they want to have more than one wife, whatever wicked imagination you thought of, it still ain't right. God will forgive you if you confess and repent and accept Jesus Christ. He's not going to forgive you if you worship in Muhammad. If you die worshiping Muhammad, you will go to hell. Praying all the Muslim prayers and stuff, you ain't making it to heaven. That ain't getting y'all to heaven. I'm telling you the truth. I don't care what Muhammad put in the Quran. I'm telling you what the word of God say. That's not the word of God. Muhammad ain't getting no revelation from God. Ain't no prophet prophesied Muhammad. He made up Islam. He, made, he called himself a prophet. The way how the Christians and the Bible came in, it was three thousands of people being added to the church. Muhammad had to create Islam, then go look for followers. They was already had followers before the Christ before Christ built the church. Remember, a lot of his followers were Jews. Then they went to the Gentiles, but they started preaching in the temples in Jerusalem. Where did Muhammad preach at? He ain't preached nowhere because he was no preacher. Everybody in the scripture was preachers of righteousness. Every prophet that came after like Exodus and Leviticus, they all quoted from the other prophets before or rebuked them. What did Muhammad do that was in harmony with the word of God? Even the New Testament prophets quoted the Old Testament. This is how we can see the spirit of God and the spirit of error. My Christ is my king and nobody can say anything or do anything to take him from me. Believe what he did on the cross and his resurrection and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Have eternal life. Yeah. She said, Divine B said, took the wrong path and had crystals from Muslim and other places. I was having demonic dreams. I got rid of them and prayed and haven't had dreams like that since. Yeah, I don't remember having demonic dreams or nothing like that. But I could remember just unclean spirits being inside of me. Me leaning on my own understanding, so... Everything that I thought and felt was right, I would do it and I would follow it. Yeah, Brad says, Mizzle TV explained how there is not one contradiction in the Bible, but there are obviously several in the Quran. Randy says, good day, high body of Christ and brothers and sisters and my girlfriend, Sandy. Peace be unto you. Be in peace, brother. Just Joshua there. Yeah. That's all I can do. So... My phone is on 4%, y'all. Brad, thank you for the 199 contribution. Jesus is God. There is no God before him. From Genesis, that's what we reading about, his spirit. Whenever they talking about the spirit of God, the angel of the Lord. You know you're reading about Jesus. Jesus has providence over all kingdoms and leaders. Amen. Yeah, that's in. 
think that's in John, where he said, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Yeah, they worship man over God. They say Muhammad is going to get them to God. Am I? No, I'm not homeless, bro. I don't have a home to record in like that, but not that I can be comfortable without distractions, but I, I'm not homeless. No, he is a, he has a home and a mansion in heaven. Thank you, brother Randy. My home is, is in heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. Uprising, what's up, man? Do you know Easter is a pagan belief? A lot of stuff is pagan belief, brother. The people who made Wendy's is probably pagans. You think if they was Christians, they would keep letting people raise, raise these prices up as the, the economy raising, or they would just keep it as the same price it was from they, when they first opened? We used to be able to get meals for $7 with the drink and everything. And I said, tell me the dispensation period. This was from the time of before, during the Old Testament. Jenny and Kenny Hagman. I absolutely love you, brother. No, I know water is a pagan holiday and you're right he probably wasn't raised in that day these sick people lied to us all yeah oh you said you know easter is a pagan now now you know easter is a pagan holiday no it's not like so when they made easter it was so they wouldn't have to keep celebrating the passover but he wasn't supposed to do that. What they did was change the biblical law. So they were like, they were believers who did it. They just didn't believe that we should, as Christians and as the church, should follow the way how the Hebrew Israelites, when they did the Passover. So they wanted to change it, and that's what they did. But they they could they they should have tried as much as they could have to keep it but be distant in, in this thing and not have the same spirit that's attached to it than the crimes and the spirits that was attached to the Hebrews Israelites that's why they done away with it and just said we celebrating Easter now because at the Passover it was a lot of crimes going on and they had blood on their hands So Christ is the law, and he, they knew these things. The bishops that met, they knew Christ was the fulfilling of the law. So they said, well, we are the church. We can do what we want. And they, that's where you get all this new doctrines coming in. Church only on Sunday, all this stuff, because they didn't have to keep all them customs like the Hebrew Israelites. They had to go once a week and burn the incense and stuff like that in the temple. All day. Had to keep it burnt all day. Yeah, this is a wicked world we live in, Martha. But the word of God will take out all that wickedness. But I'm not going to lie. We are in the wicked world. 
and you will have a lot of people that will team up and try to it's like I don't know what it is but it's definitely not I just I don't question nothing no more I just go with whatever God tell me to do and whatever he tell me to speak I'm just here making sure I don't I do whatever is possible to not stay conformed to this world That's the spirit of the devil. I'm looking and I'm seeing like these Mexicans and they got like shorts on and I don't know if she got a skirt, but it's like only 41 degrees. It's not even that hot out here to be like dressed like that. It's not even really hoodie weather like that. You have a small jacket on, but that's a proud look. And that's what, I don't know if they celebrating Easter or what, but people get dressed up and look all proud you don't dress up any other day. But today you got on new clothes and all this stuff just to go to church on a Sunday. Only on Sunday. That's my problem. I don't got no problem with nobody going to church on Sunday. My problem is y'all should go every day. That's God's problem because he put it in the word. He said, meditate in this word day and night. And he said, they continue ten in the temple daily. It says it like three times. Dave Gospel Thomas, these hypocrites flock the church on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, but the scripture said, after they killed him, the Sabbath draw nigh. All right, we got some scriptures here. Genesis 32 and 30. My phone is on 3%, y'all. And John 1 and 18 and John 4 and 12. I'm going to try to get through these scriptures. That's 11.34. So, might have to go back in here and charge my phone. Genesis 32 and 30. It's like when to die. Genesis 32 and 30. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. He's saying he's seen the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ seen God in himself. People seen God when they looked at Jesus Christ. Said no man ever seen God. The only begotten Son who came from heaven, he seen God. Speak, bro. My first time, not my last. Tim slow in. Peace be unto you. So this lesson I wanted to get to, we're gonna have to come back and do this later about Muhammad, how him creating Ramadan, we gonna try to wait till the sun go down. Cause I want all them devils to come out of the Muslims. They gonna act righteous right now cause they can't think nothing negative. They fasting and it's Ramadan. I want y'all, I wanna catch y'all when the sun go down. So I'll make sure I come back around seven o'clock or 
so so y'all can get y'all drinks and y'all look they say they fasting but soon as the um fast over they start drinking alcohol and everything when the sun go down so i'm gonna catch y'all when the sun go down and we're gonna be right back on y'all with these teachings on prayer and fasting and why ramadan goes against jesus teachings i just got a few scriptures i want to go through not a lot at all just a few scriptures says that so the muslims prophet muhammad said jesus is just a prophet that's blasphemy but not god so he's just a prophet but, but not god but he and they meaning all muslims lie on even moses disciple prophet isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and all the apostles in Jesus Christ because they said his name will be called the mighty God, the everlasting father. So who is Muhammad? Where did he get this revelation? Who told him that same Satan that came to him in the cave told him all this stuff? That's how we know it wasn't no angel Gabriel telling Muhammad nothing. See, I just proved it to y'all. That's all I got to do is give y'all a little stuff like that to open up your mind and let you see. Yeah, this does. It's, 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 it's make a lot of sense. Muhammad said he believed Jesus is a prophet, but why would you go against the prophets that prophesied his who he was before he was even born? How the government would be upon his shoulders before he was even born. Muhammad seen all this and he said, I'm just going to say he's a prophet and not God because I want to deceive people. He made the prophecies come true where they say they're going to be false apostles and false prophets in the last days. And they're going to deceive many. Oh. <sighs> Did I get through Genesis 32 and 30? And then you said John 1 and 8. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And then you said, John 1 and 18. It says, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So Jesus Christ seen God. And then John 4 and 12. The Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, seen it. He was there in Genesis. John 4 and 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof of him? himself and his children and his cattle Jesus answered and said unto her whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a water shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life so he letting y'all know you drink this water this is the the, the, the um the rivers of living water that's going to flow through your stomach. Bridget, God bless, amen.
Jenny and Kenny Higman said, listen, I'm on the porch. I'm on my porch. And my man ran into the house hearing truth. Pray for him, please. I gave you some messages what you can do earlier in this stream. You said that he's a Catholic or something like that. And I told you, you can show him the Bible and ask him who 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 did he believe in as a Catholic? What brought him to be a Catholic? And then ask him who created the Catholic Church. And should we follow God or should we follow man? And then you can go and do studying and find all the scriptures that say, put your trust in the Lord, don't trust in man. And that should help, that should help a lot right there. Dollar Sign Entertainment. Thank you for the two dollar contribution, brother. Genesis chapter two, verse ten through thirteen. Who are good people? Still caught two percent on the phone. Let's try to get through as fast as we could. Genesis chapter two, verse ten through thirteen. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And a river and a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compassed the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedillium and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the river, and the fourth river is Euphrates. And I told y'all the Euphrates River drying up because we read that scripture. And it talked about no land, no certain um, lands will have no water raining on it. Hey. Who's this, Fearless Williams? There's no use here. I'm going to become Muslim because this DRA and so in other people's religion. All right, you got to look at it like this. When Muhammad called him, when he called himself a prophet, but what then he said Jesus Christ is not a prophet. I mean, he said Jesus Christ is not the messiah but he's just a prophet he disrespected every christian by blaspheming the holy ghost and saying jesus christ is not a messiah and that's where everybody in the scriptures he was proving that how many miracles did muhammad do how many blind people did he heal see so what are y'all talking about all this stuff was documented the, the, they had to go back to the priests and the temples and give testimonies. This is why they wanted to kill Jesus. See, y'all keep playing games. Muhammad ain't do nothing. This is serious. They, they don't have no history of Muhammad doing no miracles on nobody, healing nobody. Jesus really healed blind people 
They had to go back to the priest in the temple and give testimonies. And all these stories we read about are witnesses of people that he did all these miracles on. This is crazy. And y'all saying that Muhammad is a prophet. But what did he do? He hurt more people than he healed. He hurt Aisha. He hurt all his followers. He hurt the people he sent to go to war with other people. How many people did Muhammad heal? He killed more lives than he saved. So that's what I look at. That ain't no prophet of God. A prophet of God is sent to warn people to turn from wicked ways so they can find God and God to heal them. One plant, one water, God give the increase. Muhammad didn't lead y'all to God. They believe in all the same things that just have extra rules that are to help them be good people. Italy. Uh. Peace. I don't know what you're trying to get me to say, Italia. What does that mean, y'all? They're trying to get me to say something in a different language that I don't know. They could be trying to get me to say something that get me in trouble. You got to tell me what that means. If it's good or bad, then I'll say it. Gino was here, said Leviticus 25 and 23 made me think. Let's see. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. For ye are strangers and sojourners with me. So God said the land is his. The land shall not be sold forever. You are strangers and sojourners with me. So that was dealing with the redemption of the land. The common evangelist, peace be, peace be unto you. Palestine needs freedom from Hamas. They all need freedom. How is that a lie, bro? Look into history, into Catholic and Christian violent missions. Well, Catholics is not biblical
they were fighting over them wanting to call themselves high priests and say we're Catholics or whatever, and Jesus Christ being the high priest, and there's no mediator between men. Because, you know, they think the high priest, they come up to, into the hospitals. If you need somebody to pray for you, they come into the jails and the prisons. If you need somebody to pray for you, they got uh, they still function. But that office is there's not there's not is I don't do no burnt offerings. Y'all ain't operating like the Levitical priest. So how you calling yourself a priest? Uh, not a not a priest from God. See, that's a problem, too. They got to bow down and confess. Every knee will bow every time we'll confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And if you call yourself a priest, you saying he not a high priest and he ain't died for, for, for what he did. He died for on the cross. They walk around with some of them be having crucifixes on their arm um, waist. Daniel Cortez. That crucifix don't represent Jesus Christ. So they showing you. They not operating from an office of biblical, like a um, man of God. Yeah, we're not supposed to be doing no sacrifices for our sins. Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid that price. No, first you put... Uh, I'll try to be a little more respectful to each other in the comments. Let me see what else we got. John, yo, the, the, the rabbits and the eggs come from pagan Rome. All that Easter egg bunny hunting and stuff like that came from Rome, right? One percent, y'all. I think I might gracefully bow out dollar sign entertainment with another two dollar contribution thank you brother genesis 25 verse 22 through 26 and the children struggled together within her and she said if it be so why am i thus and she went to inquire of the lord and the lord said unto her two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separate from thy bowels and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled behold there were twins in her womb and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment and they called his name esau so that's 22 through 25. And after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's hill. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. This is the beef. That's what he said. Judge Ram, I always got the Bible on me. I don't know what you're saying, brother. We reading. You post the scripture. You just posted it two times. Do I have the Bible on me? Open the Bible. Now post the scripture. There it go. No women can preach. Amen. It's in Timothy's, and I want to say it's in Corinthians, where they say, I suffer not of women to teach, nor to use up authority over the men, but to be in silence. 
as also saith the law. They are commanded to be in obedience, as also saith the law. If a woman want to learn anything, let her act her husband at home. For it's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What came first? The word of God out from you or to you only? It don't say all that, but it say um, she commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. Adam was first formed and then Eve and Adam was the stronger vessel. He wasn't deceived, but we, but Eve was the weaker vessel and she was deceived. It says she shall be saved by childbearing. He said, I suffer not a woman to teach in the church. They are commanded. So I went through Corinthians. And um, First Timothy chapter two verse eleven. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed in Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, was in a transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. What about the Samaritan dad quality? They weren't allowed to have no dealings with the Samaritans. But when Jesus came to that water in that well, he prophesied to that woman, told her how many husbands she had and stuff like that. She went back to her whole family. Leonard Daniel said Isaiah 44 and 5. One shall say, one shall say, I am the Lord's and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Barbarians were called barbarians because barbar -bar was what it sounded like to them. No, the word of God don't say that, brother. Trisha Hanley, can I rap? Yeah, but I'm not making no raps on here right now. Maybe soon I'll have some some videos that I can give you some uh, words for Christ. I got some old videos on here when I was freestyling for Jesus Christ. First John chapter two and twenty three. Uh. All right. First John chapter two and twenty three.
Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. See? Daniel Cortez, you said preach. Man, Jesus Christ is God. He loves all y'all. I got 1% on this phone. When I um, come back, we're going to finish talking about Allah, talk about why Muhammad went against Jesus Christ, how Jesus Christ is the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords, how he loves you all. I'm going to prove with the scriptures how Muhammad never seen God. He never knew God. And he was deceived the whole time before he created Islam. When I come back, I want it to be like closer to whatever they fill out. They can have, they got time to have their imams contact me before I come back live. Because if don't none of them imams, Muslims reach out and prove what I'm saying is not biblical, then it gives me even more confirmation to not hold back on nothing what I'm going to say. Brian Faison said, God retrospect talk so much but won't mention what's happening in jerusalem right now what's happening in jerusalem right now it's happening all over the world may peace be upon jerusalem what am i supposed to talk about brother the, a lot of them jews over there don't believe in jesus christ so they believe in the Old Testament. They believe in the eye and the eye, two, four, two. Some of them do believe in Jesus Christ. All I can say is I hope and pray Jesus Christ come in their heart and they can open up their heart to the truth. Diddy, Diddy, you think Jesus will still love me? I'm saying Jesus going to love you regardless. You're his child. You know what I'm saying? You're his child. So, if these allegations about Diddy are true, he can accept Jesus Christ in his life and be forgiven. But the world is going to hate you. They're not going to forgive you. But people that have the spirit of God, they, they're gonna, just going to want to hear your testimony, want to hear you confess your sins and repent. And they won't judge you over it, but... It ain't like they'll forget what happened, but they won't judge you. You won't be condemned by nobody in Christ. We'll only try to help you. Trust me, P. Diddy ain't the first one that did this. He won't be the last one. And he's not the only one. Drex, Sister Ill. Milo 101. <laughs> Are you cool with Young Pharaoh now? I'm cool with everybody now, but that don't mean I won't destroy you on what you're teaching. If you come against my God, then in the spiritual realm, I'm coming with I'm coming to snipe you. But I know in the past, I, you probably heard videos that I made freestyles on my old social media where I have still up that I haven't taken down. Where people can go back and see how much darkness I was and I was deceived. I was making battle rap songs against the brother Young Pharaoh. So, no, nah, I don't have no animosity or nothing towards Pharaoh. That was a time when I was following a false doctrine. I was deceived. If Young Pharaoh need help and he wants somebody to help him understand what the word of God mean. I help Flower. He can reach out to me. When you come back, I'll be coming back with the teacher, with the lesson.
Chris Melicon. Peace be unto you. I'll check y'all when I come back later. If y'all want to support, y'all can go get the Jesus Christ is God t-shirts. Hit the like button. If you're a new subscriber, subscribe. Check out the playlist. And I'll be back soon. Peace be unto y'all. In Jesus' name. Must want me to stay for a couple more minutes. They ain't letting me in. When I try to hit the end button, they end. Let me read a couple more comments. Hold up. Okay, we have to get this on charge. It's on two percent. I'll be long suffering over here with y'all. All glory be to God. It's 12 o'clock. I'm going to try to work. Hopefully I can get a couple hours, two, three hours, four hours in. And come back. Now it's on 1%. I come back at like 5. I come back at like 5 or 5.30. And hopefully I got enough charge to go live for two hours. And then by that time, the, the Muslims will be done with Ramadan. So the sun is down and they can get their drinks. They're going to have Hennessy. They're going to have bottles of um, Douce. They're going to be popping their liquor. Because that's what the Muslims do when Ramadan is over. They can't wait for the sun to go down so they can get drunk and have their Heinekens and their Hennessy. Their bottles and their liquor and their alcohol. So I'm going to wait till they get all drunk and get all hyped up and stuff. And then they can come and say what, what the devil want them to say. And I'm going to prove everything they saying. It's not going to be coming from the Spirit of God anyway. But when they come, I'm going to prove everything what they're saying. Don't line up with the Word of God. So I just want y'all to hang in there for a little bit. And I apologize because this phone has been giving me a lot of problems. So... real quick and read a few more comments before we get up out of here. Be safe. Always Kevin Milligan. Somebody says, say my name. I'll put your name up in the comment section. How about you say Jesus Christ is God? But don't just say it, believe it. You have to know that's this truth. Don't just go around saying it without knowing it and knowing what scriptures that you've seen that you can believe Jesus Christ is God. May peace be upon you all. Good to see you. No, Sam, stop. You have to get the right charging cable 